Their legend lives in the immortal names. Coach Newt Rockney, a storied backfield known as the Four Horsemen. It's a brand of pageantry that simply means tradition. The Fighting Irish have evolved into college football's most famous team, and today they hope to write another chapter. The Miami Hurricanes are the nouveau riche of college football. They are the team of the 80s, winning two national championships in the last five years. They are still number one. And today they will take on all of Notre Dame's tradition and seek their 37th straight regular season victory. Two teams, two eras are about to clash. Number one Miami plays number four Notre Dame on CBS. welcomes you to the biggest game so far of the 1988 college football season. Number one Miami and unbeaten Notre Dame. When you come to Notre Dame to play football, you dream of Saturday afternoons like this. Gorgeous weather, the Golden Dome sparkling in the background, sellout crowd at Notre Dame Stadium. And when you play football at Miami, these are the kind of games you can't wait to play. Inside the stadium, it's the toughest ticket in sport this weekend. All morning long, fans have been milling around outside Notre Dame Stadium. Actually, ever since last year when Miami beat Notre Dame 24 to nothing down in the Orange Bowl here in South Bend and throughout the Midwest, Notre Dame fans have been waiting for this rematch. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger. You really don't have to build this one up very much, do you? You know how high the stakes are. Miami, to win back-to-back -back national championships, needs this one. Notre Dame, to get back to the top, they have to beat the Hurricanes. You also know that there have been hostilities between these two schools, bad feelings. Uh, they feel Miami ran up the score. And, of course, Miami reacting angrily the way Jimmy Johnson's telephone number was published. Short time ago, the coaches meeting at midfield, shaking hands. We thought the hostilities had died but then as the hurricanes were leaving the field an ugly few moments down there in the end zone pushing and shoving broke out there was some kicking police had to step in and finally the hurricanes were escorted back inside the locker room so i guess we can truthfully say as we get ready for this game these two teams still don't like each other let's bring in pat hayden right now pat you know four straight victories by miami over notre dame they have beaten the irish by a total score of 133 to 20 simply put is notre dame better equipped well i think they are and then really it's the talent gap between the two schools has been closed dramatically over the last four years and the irish will field their fastest team in school history on the field today and that's what you need when you play Miami great athletes who can run Matt, you and I have talked about the importance of the two quarterbacks now let's start with young Tony Rice of Notre Dame well he has been an accomplished runner for Notre Dame in the past two years he got off to a slow start throwing the ball early this year but it's come on strongly the last two weeks throwing the ball very accurately and that's the key Brent can he complete those short possession type passes to keep drives alive Pat, you can quote all the stats you want about quarterbacks, but I'll give you one about Steve Walsh. 16-0 and 0 as a starting quarterback. That's all you need to know about him. Well, I think you judge a quarterback by how many times he brings his team from behind and if he can win big games. Steve Walsh has done that at Miami. The thing is, people don't seem to be able to get pressure on him, and if you can't put a rush on him, what he does is sit back in that pocket and carves you apart. He can put four or five touchdowns on the board. Pat, I mentioned it was glorious weather here in South Bend. Observant fans have seen our hair blowing around. Yes, the wind will be a factor in this ball game. Busy Saturday. Let's check in with Jim Nance to find out what else is going on. Take it away, Jim. All right, thank you, Brent. As we get set for the big one in South Bend, a surprise in the making right now in the top 10. It involves number eight, South Carolina. The Gamecocks 6-0 on the season. Look at this. Receiving a jolt from Georgia Tech in the first half, Todd Ellis has thrown three interceptions in that one. 14th ranked and unbeaten Wyoming, tied up by New Mexico. The Lobos 1-5 on the year, scoring on a 79 yard pass play. 20th ranked Florida. The Gators have just scored to start the second half. Missed the extra point. Vandy leads. Now Emmett's 
Smith is out for at least a month because of a banged up knee suffered a week ago. Only 65 yards rushing to this point by the Gators. They trail Vanderbilt on the road. And as we get set for Notre Dame and Miami, last night the baseball teams from these two schools squared off amidst a World Series atmosphere in South Bend. It might be, it could be, it is. Harry Carey throwing out the first pitch last night. Miami opened up a big lead, but this two-run homer by Mike Rotkus of the Fighting Irish cut the Hurricanes' margin to 6-3 in the sixth. Then in the bottom of the ninth, with one out and the bases loaded, James Sass, a former football player with the Irish, walked to force in the winning run as the Irish rallied with a three-run ninth, just like they drew it up in the game plan. Coach Holtz is a, gave us a little game plan. Uh, he just told hey, Murph, go out there and do it. Tell the kids that they can do it. Tell them they can win. So chalk that up as a big upset by the Notre Dame baseball team. Now these two schools will clash in football. We'll rejoin Brent and Pat at Notre Dame Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. Feels as though is about to burst at the seams. Notre Dame Stadium here in South Bend getting ready for the biggest game the Irish have hosted since 1974. Top ranked and unbeaten Hurricanes now coming out of their locker room and ready to file onto the field. Jimmy Johnson has concluded with his final words. Those were the captains who came out first. They'll be coming to midfield. As for the buildup, well, here's what Jimmy Johnson told his team. You are disliked so much simply for the reason that you have played good. Uh, if you hadn't been successful against Notre Dame in the past, then, you know, they really wouldn't care. You know, they really wouldn't be excited about this game. But uh, you should take pride in the success that you had. And, and uh, every time they boo you, you ought to be able to stick out your chest and uh, hold your head up high because you did good and you're going to do good in the future. Miami has been holding its head up very high as of late. They have won 36 straight regular season games. They have won 20 in a row on the road. And since losing to Penn State in the Fiesta Bowl, 16 straight. And now the rest of the team will file out behind the captains and come onto the field here in South Bend. Quarterback Steve Walsh, number four. We'll be talking about him throughout the afternoon. This is a marvelous collection of college athletes. There's Big Bill Hawkins. The greeting will not be a warm one for them here in South Bend, however. fabulous job down there when he checked into his hotel room last night it was surrounded with Notre Dame memorabilia and for more on what happened as they were leaving the field let's check in with John Dockery John what triggered it and how ugly was that incident when it got fairly ugly it wasn't just a pushing and shoving match the police as you said had to use their billy clubs to force Miami back into the locker room and behind me right now Notre Dame is in their locker room alone with their thoughts perhaps thinking of some of the bygone legends like the Bertellis and the Lou Jacks and the Hearts and the Hornings, and they will leave by this narrow hallway, perhaps thinking of a national championship, something they haven't done in over a decade. And each player will touch this sign, play like a champion today. And that's exactly what they'll have to do to beat this talented Miami Hurricane Club. And here they are.
be Lou Holtz and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame against Jimmy Johnson and number one Miami coming up. CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from Notre Dame Stadium in South Bend, Indiana, it's the Miami Hurricanes versus the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Today's CFA game is sponsored by GMAC, the official sponsor of America's dreams. Team Xerox, a world leader in document processing. We document the world. And by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. Is beautiful. That part of the graphic to pay attention to. The wind, 10 to 15 miles an hour. Now on your television screen, it'll blow from right to left. Notre Dame will have it at their back. They won the flip. They elected to defer. So Billy Hackett will kick it off for the Irish. And Miami will return, and they will be moving in to that rather gusting wind right now. Spencer and Hill are the deep men. Randall Hill, number three, near the right side of your screen. And Daryl Spencer returns punts and kickoffs. And final instructions here for the officiating crew. Pressure on the players as well as the officials coming into this game. We have a split crew here this afternoon. The referee is Bill McDonald. at the four going to a left return and he's down at the 16 Andre Jones number seven ripped in for the Irish now Miami offense Steve Walsh their unbeaten starting quarterback will come up keep an eye on number 43 Cleveland Gary he is a superb pass catcher out of the backfield outside with Hill and Dale Dawkins Dawkins a little more productive so far 84 Rob Chizinski another Key man to watch as Walsh comes up. First and ten now for the game. They will throw on first down. No pressure. Complete at the 34 to Randall Hill on first down. And down it goes. He dropped the ball. Yeah, that ball should have been caught, but Randall Hill did drop it. Bobby Garcia anchors their offensive line. Mike Sullivan, Barry Panfill forced to move in after Holder was injured as a center. Garcia was a guard. John O'Neill and Darren Bruce. O'Neill playing with some injuries today. And it is second and ten as Miami drops the first pass of the afternoon. Now Cleveland Gary into the heart of that Notre Dame defense where Wes Pritchett brings him down. I'd like you to meet that defense right now. Chris Zorich, number 50. You might want to watch him in the heart. He's a good one. George Williams and Jeff Alm will be under pressure all day. Arnold Ollie is his name. 97, a freshman starting at end, along with Frank Stams, Wes Pritchett, and Mike Stonebreaker. And we see the first wrinkle by Lou Holtz. Six defensive backs, something he did not show at Pittsburgh. We knew something was in the works. South Hall is in at safety, number 31, six DBs. And a great catch coming out by Brown. Makes a catch at the 40-yard line to give the Canes a first down on a 20-yard pass. Walsh to Brown. Brent, Miami hits the seams of a defensive zone defense better than anybody in college football. This is a, although there are five defensive backs in, it is still just a zone. Andre Brown, right in the middle of that zone, runs right past Streeter, who had the short zone. Nice touch by Steve Walsh. Pritchett and Stonebreaker are the inside linebackers. Chudzinski moves over to the right side. He's the tight end for Miami. And they run Conley straight up into that defense. Williams, 97 there, as were several other of the Irish, including Pritchett, number 34. We just talked about how Miami likes to hit the zones, the seams, the zones. Watch the safeties when they come out. What they like to do is get that tight end right down here or the fullback, Gary, and they hit the ball right in here. They do it better than anybody in America. They've been doing it ever since. Gary Stevens has been here as the offensive coordinator. Now Bolkar comes in at linebacker, and they move Pritchett over to the left side on the inside. 
Second and seven. Walsh under pressure. Ball is knocked free, and the Irish pounce on it. And Steve Walsh thinks he was throwing the ball. He thought his arm was moving forward. And that is the key, what we said at the top of the show. Can Notre Dame put some pressure on Steve Walsh? Nobody's done it. Frank Stams on the left of the screen is the one who's going to put the pressure from the outside. He is the outside linebacker. He is getting held, but runs through the hole, and that's a good call. That ball was not going forward because Stams actually hit it before the ball was coming forward. Notre Dame with a first down at the Miami 41. Tony Rice's first series, and he brings Pat Eilers 13 in motion, and they will run right straight ahead behind the left side of the offensive line. They bring the fullback on first down. That's Braxton Banks. Let's meet that Notre Dame backfield. Tony Rice certainly in the spotlight this afternoon. Great depth here at running back. We'll be seeing Tony Brooks there. Outside wide receivers, Steve Alanese and Ricky Waters. Waters is in the Tim Brown spot. And the freshman, remember him, number 86. He's out of the Miami area. Derek Brown. He could emerge here this afternoon. Second and nine. Rice almost intercepted by Randy Shannon, the linebacker who dropped off that time, and they were going with the tight end, Derek Brown, and he was doubled up. Now here's the offensive line. Some big question marks here. Mike Helt is the center, but the two guards had to be replaced. Mike Brennan once was a tight end, then a tackle, now a guard with Joe Allen making their first starts at that position. Andy Heck, another former tight end, along with Dean Brown. So it'll be the guard spot where Miami will attempt to apply a lot of pressure. This is a third and nine for Rice and Notre Dame. Deep drop by Rice. Over the middle, diving catch by Derek Brown. And the freshman tight end went sprawling for the ball and could not come up with it. And they said that the, hit, the ball hit the ground, but Miami has the kind of defense. They play a lot of double zone where the tight end should catch a lot of passes. The Michigan tight end caught four balls against a couple of weeks ago. That ball did hit the ground. But Notre Dame's game plan is to get the ball to Derrick Brown. Jim Sexton standing in front formation for the Irish at his own 47-yard line. Spencer bluffs the fair catch. And it goes into the end zone. Todd Light had a shot at it at about the one-yard line, but the ball took a high hop. Goes on in, so it'll be Miami's second possession. They'll be coming out on the 20 when you return. Thams out of Akron came to Notre Dame a fullback. Now a linebacker, we asked him about applying pressure on Steve Walsh. He sees his receiver and he lets go of the ball. He doesn't like to take a sack. And, uh, my goal Saturday is really just to touch him, touch his jersey, see if he's real back there, see if you can tackle him uh, and, and get pressure on him. Make him force the ball into a receiver where he doesn't want to throw the ball or put him in a situation he's not comfortable with. Forcing a fumble, the Irish could not convert, and Walsh to throw again on first down, complete working the sideline to Dale Dawkins, number 11. Fred, I think Sam's made a very nice point. The idea is not necessarily to sack Steve Walsh because that's very hard to do, but the idea is to rush him, get in his face, make him just a little bit more uncomfortable. You don't have to necessarily sack a quarterback to throw off his rhythm. And there's some more pressure right there in the front by George Williams. Bull car and Stonebreaker on the inside. Pritchett is out. Four defensive backs on this first and 10 for Walsh in Miami. And they will run with Conley wide. And it was shut off as number 29, Stan Smagala, comes up from the corner. Florida State with some trouble again this week. That one in the second quarter. And Nebraska rolling over Oklahoma State. Oklahoma shutting out Kansas State right now. All early scores here this afternoon. Wyoming trying to stay unbeaten in Florida trying to come back after that disappointment at the hands of Memphis State. Here we've got no score. Miami with a second and eight against Notre Dame. The ball on their own 39-yard line. They split the running backs and they slot left. Gary running wide and both car penetrated allowing the Notre Dame defense to come up and bury him. Brent, although Gary was 
was stuffed there by Arnold Ali, right there, number 97. He is the freshman out of Carson, California. Miami gets more production out of the fullback than any team, I think, in America. Because they are not afraid to give him the ball. Most teams give the fullback the ball once every papal election, but not Miami. They incorporate him very much in their game plan as a receiver and as a runner. Now it's Andre Jones as the Irish continue to make late substitution on defense. They continue to shift that defense, somewhat like an NFL team. They go to the blitz, safety blitz. They hit the hot receiver, Cleveland Gary, coming out. First down, what Miami does so well. They counter with a hot receiver, just like an NFL team. And that is a 13-yard gain and a first and 10. That's what makes this offense so lethal. And Brent, Steve Walsh can hit you just as much, or beat you with his mind just as much as his arm. Watch, this is Streeter coming on the blitz. Walsh reads that and hits Gary as he slips out of the backfield. Now, he is a hot receiver. No one's there to pick up Cleveland Gary. And it's a beautiful read and throw by Walsh. No one does it any better in college. A terrific play. Pritchett is back on the inside. Walsh changing the call at midfield. He'll throw on first and down. No pressure, and the ball was not held by Conley. Pat, was that a little bit high, or should he have had it? That was a high ball, but what Steve Walsh is trying to find, Brent, is if Notre Dame is in a two-deep defense or a three-deep. If they're in three-deep, he's going to throw the out pass, and he finds that they're in a two-deep zone, he's going to find those seams, as he did earlier with Andre Brown. Well, so far, the Notre Dame defensive scheme is an attempt to confuse and change up against Walsh in Miami. One different look with different personnel after another. Now they put Pritchett up on the defensive line. They show blitz this time. Stonebreaker backing out a step. Now Pritchett comes back out and they drop off at the last instant. He drops off incomplete. They force Walsh to look safety valve that time. Shannon Crowell, number 20, whom we expect to see a lot here this afternoon, is now in the game. Conley has been a disappointment to Coach Johnson. So we may see a lot of Crowell. The defense is how confusing right now. Well, this is a very good point because the Miami team thought, watching films of Notre Dame the last few weeks, that they were very vanilla on defense. They thought they could get a very good pre-snap read on this uh, Notre Dame defense, but they've come out and changed that plan considerably using an awful lot of nickel and substitution. I think it's obvious now that Lou Holtz and Notre Dame saved this defensive package for this game. They have worked on it, and they did not show it to Pittsburgh. Now they show a six-man front again, drop two out of it quickly, and they get to Walsh. Incomplete. He was throwing that time. But Frank Stams again applied the pressure. The defensive package of Notre Dame has been the difference so far in this game, and it's the work of the assistant coaches. The most dangerous pass rusher on a team always comes from the backside. That time, Steve Walsh was hand was going forward, but again, it was Stams from the backside applying the pressure. Tim Kalal to punt for Miami. And Ricky Waters, dangerous return man, standing back on the Notre Dame 15-yard line. They almost get through on it. He hangs it high. Waters is going to let it bounce. It's a bad short punt. Notre Dame will have the ball at the 25-yard line, first and 10. A 25-yard punt. Tony Rice and the Irish come back with the offense when you return in just a moment. We have nine and a half minutes left in the first quarter. And the Miami defense, so successful during this decade, out on the field again. Tony Rice may go to the option attack, may try to put some pressure on the outside of this defense. Let's see. They send Eilers in motion early. They'll toss, and it will run Tony Brooks wide, and I mean Miami was ready. It's hard to make a living when you run against this defense, and here are the fellas who headed up. What a year Russell Maryland, who's out of the Chicago area, number 67. They move Shane Curry to tackle. That allows Greg Mark, 94, to go outside. Bill Hawkins, you know about him. He's a fine one. Bernard Clark stood so tall in the middle in the Orange Bowl. Outside, folks, you want to watch two great ones, 22 and 91. 22, Randy Shannon is perhaps the most underrated linebacker in America today. Rod Carter will play in the NFL someday. Now they run the draw package, and that was Mark Green. He is a better draw runner than Brooks in looking at the films, and Brooks does better when he gets to the outside. Now the secondary. There's a question about this secondary. Donald Ellis and Kenny Berry. And 
at safeties, Bobby Harden and Bubba McDowell. Pat, uh, the secondary just really hasn't been challenged, and I think that the Notre Dame coaches want to find out about it. They've played a lot of option teams the last couple of weeks, and no one's really tried to throw the ball uh, against them. Tony Brooks is now in at tailback on this third and seven, and off the fake, Tony Rice will throw it. Complete first down. He hits the rocket. Ismail on a 22-yard gain, and if Tony Rice can stand in the pocket and deliver the pass like that, this is going to be a tough go for the Miami defense. What makes this Notre Dame team different than any other one in the past is the speed at the skilled positions. Ismail, number 25, has legitimate 4-2 speed in the 40, and you have to respect that. Found the little soft spot there in the double zone and well thrown by Rice. Andy Heck in that offensive line, helping Joe Allen with a double team in the middle, giving the guards help. Now it's first and ten. Ball is at midfield. Miami jumped. Rice keeps that ball and picks up four yards. There's an obvious penalty marker down. The only question is whether or not the offensive lineman pulled him offside because he certainly jumped across the line of scrimmage. You know, Brent, I thought it was interesting talking to Lou Holtz yesterday. A lot of coaches sequence plays at the beginning of the ball game. You've always heard about Bill Walsh. But what Lou Holtz does, he has a series of questions that he wants answered at the beginning of the game. He will come out in different formations. He'll run screens, he'll run option plays, he'll throw the ball downfield, and he checks those questions off as the game goes on, and then he makes adjustments. He's one of the best adjustment coaches in college football. Well, now the Irish get the five-yard penalty against Miami, and the ball will be spotted on the 45. It is first and five. Ismail, who has legitimate 4-3 speed, coming to the left. Eilers, the slot man for Notre Dame. Miami with that familiar 4-3 that they feature. Rice keeping it on the option. He will be stopped short of the first down. Pat, talk to me about Tony Rice's decision-making as an option quarterback and what Jimmy Johnson feels he's accomplished in a year. Well, he, they feel that he is much more confident and much more dangerous on the corner of the defense when he runs the option. Last year, he was a, remember he was a sophomore, but he had to sit out his freshman year. So last year was his first year, was tentative on the corner of the defense. This year, he's not, making quicker decisions and cutting up field. Second and short, I've seen Holtz go long at Minnesota in this situation. Your base 4-3 by Miami. They'll run the draw with Green, and he struggled for that first down, but he may have been stopped short, and we've got another penalty marker down. The side judge has thrown it here on the near side at the 40-yard line. The preliminary indication is going to go against Notre Dame. Illegal procedure. One of the questions that will looking to get answered early in the game was could Tony Rice complete some passes? We've seen him do that here in the first part of the game, and that is critical because this Miami defense is very tough to run against consistently. Illegal motion. Offense. Five yards. The ball is short of a first down. Miami will take the penalty. Brent, those kind of penalties against a team that doesn't throw the ball particularly well are even more telling, more difficult. You see what he's done the last three games. He has really come on, and at Lou Holtz has worked an awful lot of overtime with Tony Rice. Second and six for Rice and Notre Dame. The pitch at the last moment to Brooks. Brooks battling, and he may be inches short. Let's see where they spot the ball. That's going to be short of a first down. This will make it third and short. Bubba McDowell, who has replaced the great Benny Blades as that safety man, coming up to stop him short. And you could see the pressure that the Miami defense got on the outside that time. There were three defenders forcing Rice to pitch it out. Third and one. The wishbone or full house look now by the Irish. Miami pressing. short yardage 
because there's a lot of different ways of getting two or three yards. This time, it's going to be the fullback right here following his block of his left guard and then just reading it and, and then bowling for about four or five extra yards. He hugs the block of his second tight end, too, Rod West, number 43. But the wishbone has three or four different ways to get you short yardage. First down for Notre Dame. Off that draw, it is Brooks squeezing through close to the 20-yard line. Brent, you mentioned how important the guards were for Notre Dame. Joe Allen and Mike Brennan, watch how they get out in front of Tony Brooks right there. When you have a couple of big bodies like that out in front of a tailback who weighs 218, you have a chance to pick up some yards. Now Miami needs a big defensive play here. The base 4-3. And they hammer with Anthony Johnson. We're in the middle of that pile. The middle linebacker Clark and also the defensive tackles were in there. Stuffing the Irish just short of that first down. And Jimmy Johnson has to be concerned. I don't think he anticipated Notre Dame having much success running the ball against this 4-3 defense of uh, Miami. Most teams in college don't run 4-3s, but they like to put big old guys who are converted linebackers in down lineman position and get them upfield. That's why they've been so good. Another thing Notre Dame is doing now, keeping the clock moving. A ball control game keeps it out of Steve Walsh's hands. You want a low scoring game, apparently, if you're going to have any success against these talented Hurricanes. Michigan got into a shootout. I'll tell you, those of you who watched that game, that was absolutely remarkable, wasn't it? That was one of the great comebacks in the history of college football. But what absolutely stunned me was the fact that Miami did that against Bo Schindbeckler without using a single timeout. They were down 30 to 14 with five and a half minutes to go. They win the game, and they had all three of their timeouts. Absolutely remarkable. Now they show a little bit of a goal line look here. This will be third and short against this wishbone for the Hurricanes. Maryland right down in the middle of things. They add a defensive tackle here. Rice checking off at the line against this stacked defense. Now Shannon moves up in a hole. Rice keeping it, cuts back for the first down. Brent, earlier we talked about the wishbone in short yardage situations. More and more teams are doing this. The first time they ran the fullback in a short yard situation. This time you're going to see the fullback and the fake, and as he cuts it back right up in the hole, this is the second option. There's about four different ways to pick up the first down in the wishbone formation. They've used two of them thus far. Jimmy Jones playing at defensive tackle alongside Maryland. This is Brooks. It is stuffed up, and he gets all he can. Jimmy Jones, the defensive tackle for Miami, just creamed the offensive lineman in front of him and ran him right back into Tony Brooks. Watch Jimmy Jones, who has as much ability as anybody on this very talented defensive front. Runs a 4-6, runs right through Joe Allen, the guard, and just raises havoc, and, the, and Brooks has nowhere to go. for the Irish. Second and a long 11. And the ball down just inside Miami's 15. Rice keeps it on the bootleg and Barry misses him and he is finally dropped by Rod Carter. Brent, I'm not so sure that Tony Rice didn't go the wrong way, but nonetheless, he has that kind of athletic ability, ability. He has that kind of ability that can make Notre Dame Stadium look like a sandlot. I think he is supposed to give that ball to Mark Green there because Green was very, very surprised. But then he's got the ability to make something positive out of something negative. Kenny Perry running him down. Now the ball is at the seven-yard line. This is a third down. The Irish have to get inside the three for a first down. So it is third and four against this defense. Rice keeping it. He'll go for the touchdown.
defensive hero of the Michigan game. The hands will come up to relax him. Bangs it. Drip would cause this touchdown as a result of some very good blocking on the right side of the offensive line. They kill and knock everybody down inside. And Tony Rice feels that, and then he hugs the block of Tony Brooks, and he gets in the end zone, and this is a surprise how well Notre Dame is running the ball. the result of two fine blocks one by tackle Dean Brown right here and by the tight end freshman Derek Brown watch how they come down and create a little seam there for Tony Rice on the option he also picks up a nice block by Tony Brooks and that's the angle the quarterback needs to take on the option when he wants to score inside the five Tony Rice told us that Derek Brown is a spectacular blocker as well as a receiver for a freshman now in last year's route down in the Orange Bowl Notre Dame Miami's 26-yard line. Now they have driven 75 yards in 12 plays. A six-minute drive. They converted all four third-down situations. They lead it 7-0. They've left Miami with three and a half minutes here in the opening quarter. The game is definitely moving in Notre Dame's favor. But this is the most explosive team in college football. And Hill's got an opening in the middle. There's a penalty flag down, thrown in an area where there might have been a clip. 15-yard line. The penalty marker goes down again. It is a clip against the Hurricanes. You mentioned how explosive this Miami team is. In 23 scoring drives this year, they've only averaged seven plays to get on the board. They can do that to you. They can come back in a hurry. What they have done against Jimmy Johnson on defense is to completely change the look on each down. Frank Stams, for example, has been flip-flopping from side to side. Now Miami, after the penalty, winds up with horrible field position. They are moved back inside the 10-yard line. And Stams, a firebrand, whips up that Irish defense again. Volcar and Pritchett are the inside men. Stonebreaker waiting to come in. Zorich is the nose man. Now Light will go with Dawkins, and they roll the double to the right side. Here comes the tail, and Zorich hammers Conley. Nose man Zorich whipped his man and then took the running back down. Downstairs to John Dockery. from his own end zone. And it is complete to the tight end, Rob Shudzinski. That's a man that Michigan allowed to get free. And now for 17 yards again. And Steve Walsh, what about that noise? Does it bother you? You know, I think really noise doesn't bother our offense. And uh, noise definitely doesn't bother the defense. It probably gets them more pumped up. Uh, we've been in loud places. We've we've handled it. And uh, you know, so I don't foresee the noise bothering our offense at all. Um, I think what we have to do is... They will run Gary on this first down. And number 69, George Williams, leading the defensive charge from the backside that time. But let's go back to that play out of the end zone. With the fans howling, they led it 7 to nothing. You just saw why Miami is so tough. And again, the two players, I'll go back to them, who can beat you. Rob Chudzinski and Cleveland Gary. And that time, it was the tight end. They have great confidence in throwing the ball. They have a terrific scheme. And they will throw it anywhere on the field yards to go for a first down. Dawkins to the right. Walsh looking in his direction. Overthrows him, but it is out of bounds. Well, 
The toughest thing to do, I think, is to teach the quarterback to throw the ball away like Steve Walsh did there, right there. And I think that's because we judge quarterbacks so much by statistics. And they seem to be so concerned about that quarterback, that is, that I think it's real tough for them to throw the ball away sometimes. But Walsh is not afraid to do that. That's why he hasn't been sacked. Steve Walsh is as good a third down college quarterback as we have ever seen. And to come back against Florida State, all three of his touchdown passes were on third down. Here's a third and five. They show slot to the right side. Intercepted. Notre Dame intercepts it, and they'll have a first down at the 35-yard line with DeJuan Francisco, the nickel man, picking it off. Two surprises here in the first half. One, the way Notre Dame's been able to run the ball, and secondly, the way they've been able to put some pressure on Steve Walsh, change up their pass defense and nickel. Watch the, right in here, you're gonna see all these guys come into the play as Steve Walsh really, again, because of the early pressure, I think he threw his ball a little bit before he wanted to, and Francisco, number 32, reads his eyes. He's playing Gary right over the middle and does a nice job of picking it off. Now the pressure solidly on the Miami defense. Maryland gets across and almost beat the snap that disrupted. The ball is loose. It's Miami's got it. And that was Maryland. But there is a penalty flag down, so hold on. They will sort it out. Bernard Clark wrapped it up, but Maryland really got across. Defensive holding. And Russell Maryland, number 67, gets across quickly. The ball came loose, and then Bernard Clark, you can't really see the hole there, but Bernard Clark, the middle linebacker, made the recovery. So now the Notre Dame defense coming back out. After that signal, the ball had been turned over. So the penalty after the turnover. That's what happened in that sequence. They, they signaled defensive holding, but they were already on offense when they held. So it is Miami's ball on the turnover. And Russell Maryland creating the chaos. Walsh gets a fresh opportunity. Here is Conley getting to the outside. Wes Pritchett over there to help out on the tackle. Leonard Conley is a guy that Miami needs to provide some outside punch to their offensive game plan. He's 5'9", 170 pounds, but he's got very good speed to the outside of the defense. He's been a pretty good receiver for them as well, but he is a nice mix between himself and Cleveland Gary, the very powerful fullback. Important part of their outside offense. Second and five. Jones seven and Frank Stams on the defensive ends. Walsh off a play fake to buy time. Throws to Cleveland Gary. And Gary has a first down before Todd Light brings him down at the 44. That's a gain of 20 yards. Walsh to Gary. Brent, what makes Miami different than most college teams is they use the fullback so much. Now, Cleveland Gary can give you two yards on a short run. He is able to get outside, and then he's also able to get downfield. And here he is, right here on the rollout. He finds the seam right in here. He's got a great feel for the game on pass routes. He comes underneath the tight end. Well, good coverage, but well thrown. Conley runs, cuts back on first down. Broke a tackle, but he is brought down at the 40-yard line. When you have a fullback that can give you two tough yards, some big plays outside, and can catch the ball like Cleveland Gary can, you've got a fullback that's very, very dangerous. They gain four yards on that first down. Leaves it with second and six. Stonebreaker and Pritchett, the inside linebackers. Stams and Jones on the outside. And we've come to the end of our first quarter. Notre Dame 7, Miami nothing. We'll return after this message and a word from your local station. Game number one, Miami, unbeaten through four. The Fighting Irish, unbeaten through five. Notre Dame scored the only touchdown in the first 15 minutes. Now, after a Notre Dame fumble, Miami has the ball. They have a second down on the Irish 39. They need to get to the Irish 33 for a first down. This is the unbeaten Steve Walsh to Cleveland. Gary and Stams wrestles him down. Well, Stams has done everything that's been asked of him today. He's put
putting pressure on Steve Walsh Trice on the passing green, uh, game. And right here, he's going to fight through a couple of blocks and put the stop on Cleveland Gary. That's a well-played defensive end. Now Notre Dame goes to a nickel package. The nose guard comes out. They show a four-man line as Stams goes down. And Walsh to throw against it has plenty of time. Down in the middle, and it is complete. Andre Brown, number 83, with a 20-yard gain, and the Canes alive on this drive. And the key here was the pass protection that Steve Walsh had right in the middle of your screen. Number 83, Andre Brown, runs the crossing route. It's man for man, and that's why there's no linebackers on the inside, and that's an easy throw. Also, Cleveland Gary stayed in to block Frank Stams that time. See 43 Cleveland on the left side of the screen. He stayed in to block Stams that time. So Stams the marked man in that rush. Haynes with a first down inside the Irish 25, and Walsh will fire again. Flares out here to Conley. Conley beats one tackler and gets inside the 15-yard line. Jeff Alm tackling him, and if you just turned on your television set, here's what happened earlier. There was a little pregame incident as Miami left the field and went through the Notre Dame players who were warming up. Rice scored the touchdown. He's the Notre Dame quarterback. And it has been a turnover-prone game so far. Now, Miami, even though they haven't given up sacks, they have been plagued by turnovers, both fumbles and interceptions. Now a second down. This is Conley into the hole, bus free. And a big first down for Miami. They get down to the Notre Dame seven-yard line, and the Hurricanes starting to exert themselves. And a very nice audible there by Steve Walsh. And again, another indication on how he can beat you with his head as well as his arm. He saw some little defensive backs in the center of that defense, and he audibled right there, gave Conley the ball, and they picked up the first down. Stonebreaker and Pritchett. The inside man, Zorich is back on the nose. First and goal for the Canes. They come up with Gary and Conley behind Walsh. They slot to the right, and Walsh wants to change it again. They'll move Conley up on that wing, and they're going to call a timeout. The 25-second clock was winding down, and rather than take a penalty, Miami uses a timeout, and Walsh goes over to the bench to talk to Jimmy Johnson. So while we've got a break, we'll take one and then return with Notre Dame leading by seven. Tough to find an empty seat in this house, huh? With Pat Hayden and John Dockery, I'm Brett Musburger. Irish lead Miami, seven nothing, but the Canes have a first and goal. And Pat, what about Miami in that red zone inside the 20 going in? They are so efficient inside the 20 yard line scoring touchdowns because they don't go into a shell like most teams seem to. They are willing to throw it anywhere and that's why they score touchdowns. Chudzinski the tight end. And Walsh, again, barking signals down at the student body section. He will throw here. He's got his man, Andre Brown, and he is short of the goal line. No, they rule he's in. Touchdown, Miami. And that's a heads-up play by Andre Brown. All he has to do is get the ball across the plane of the goal line. And that's just what he did. Great effort by Andre Brown, who grew up in the Chicago area, to reach in and score the touchdown for the Canes, who have brought some of their loyalists with them. Quite a few of whom are out of the Chicago area because Jimmy Johnson has recruited some fine football players from just down the freeway. Carlos Huerta of Miami. And an attempt here to tie the score at seven. Perfect. Miami 7, Notre Dame 7. And let's take another look at this as they crossed him coming out. Miami sometimes uses this play on a two-point conversion, Pat. And another example of Walsh using his head. This was an audible. See the man-for-man -man coverage. Gets the ball out there, and Andre Drown uses some power to get the ball into the end zone. We'll be right back. Well, the official had the position as Streeter went wrestling with Brown. 
watch as his foot goes toward the out of bounds line. There it is. But now the official must determine whether or not, as he is going out of bounds, did he reach across and break the plane earlier? He had good position on it. Touchdown, Miami. They have won 36 regular season games in a row, and Edgar Bennis set to kick it off. And the Rocket Man, Rajiv Ismail, back deep for the Irish, standing inside his own goal line. Notre Dame has gone to town with kickoff returns. Johnson and the Hurricanes worked on kickoff coverage this week. Very deep, and he will down it right there. Coming up tomorrow, we've got the busiest Sunday ever as far as the NFL is concerned. Here are the games. You take a look at them. All the action coming your way tomorrow and some big ones involving division leaders, long shots, teams that have to climb back in it. We'll start our coverage tomorrow at 1230. It's a doubleheader. These are the featured attractions late. First and ten at the 20 yard line. Score is now tied seven all. Both teams capitalizing on turnovers. Now they run co captain Mark Green and he breaks a tackle and gets out to the 26. You know, Brent, I think Mark Green is one of the most unselfish running backs I've ever come across. He probably could have gained maybe 1,300 yards a year ago if he didn't share the position with a lot of players. But he never complained, did what it took. And I think you need unselfish guys like him playing together to have a championship year. Green now comes out. And the dangerous Tony Brooks, number 40, is in. Miami with that same base 4-3 look that they use all the time. They shift the backers over to the weak side. Now they run the young man, Brooks, who just came into the game, and a penalty marker comes down. says move them back and that holding may have gone against number 71 Brown down there in the offensive line for Notre Dame and this will move them back there was a large anticipation of possible crowd control problems here after Notre Dame scored I think we counted just two oranges having been thrown and that's because the crowd has been warned twice here this afternoon of the possibility of a 15 yard penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct now it is second down ran about 12 they must get up to their own 30 here and Rice again pulls out has good protection goes long overthrows incomplete he wanted Ismail and the ball was thrown high very good coverage there by Bubba McDowell, the free safety, but very good pass protection for Tony Rice. And again, the Miami plays those four down linemen, which is unusual in college football, and they can get really get upfield. But the ball was a little bit high for Ismail and well covered by McDowell, the free safety. Back to a point Pat made earlier. For Notre Dame to stay in this, Rice is going to have to complete some balls. He's only one of four for 22 yards. He's got 13 yards to go for the first down right now. Again, the offensive line gives him time. He goes deep to Ismail down in the middle against McDowell, and he's got it. He falls down at the 25-yard line, or he would have scored. A fabulous catch with Bubba McDowell on him, 57 yards. And Brent, Bubba McDowell just misjudged it. He thought he had it all the way, and it was well covered. But Bubba McDowell was thought he was going to intercept it, and Rice is under some pressure by the front four. Early protection there. He's got a very strong arm. And he's going to get hit after he throws this one by Russell Maryland, number 67. But watch the free safety McDowell. He slows up. He thinks he's going to pick it off, misjudges it, and Ismail just bobbles the ball, and that's why he didn't score. Banks and Brooks are the running backs. Rice keeping it on the option. He gets past Shannon. He broke through the linebackers, and coming from behind, Rod Carter, number 90, 
21, the other outside man, finally got all the way over there to make the stop. And that kind of throw and completion there by Tony Rice has got to lift his spirits. He is struggling. What does surprise me, though, in the passing selection is they're not really making him throw the ball very short. He's throwing everything downfield. Clearly, those are more difficult to complete. Bailey now checks into that secondary for Miami. Banks, the fullback, breaks off the first tackle before Maryland finally wrestles into the ground just short of the 15-yard line. Wyoming hoping to stay unbeaten. And Indiana threat in the Big Ten. North Carolina State easy today. Ohio State struggling right now. So Ellis and Bailey are the cornerbacks. It's now a five-man defensive front on the wishbone. And Rice trying to get to the corner. And that was Carter, number 91, with another strong defensive effort. And that play by Carter there may, may very well have saved a touchdown because here is Carter, number 91. Watch how he plays through, strings out the option, and then puts the tackle on Rice. But this was well set up on the outside. He fights through two guys and makes the play. Lou Holtz has decided to go in fourth and short. Fourth and about a half yard to go. Brooks brought the play in from the sideline. Miami in its goal line set. Eilers is back at a halfback with Brooks. First down, Notre Dame. Fullback Braxton Banks barges behind the left side of that offensive line. Andy Heck, a tackle over there, doing a job. And Mike Brennan, the left guard as well. Lou Holtz has tremendous confidence in that wishbone formation on short yards that his guys can come up with one, two, or three yards, and he gave it a 220-pound fullback, Banks. Ball is at the Miami 14. Full house look again. Waters back at halfback. Gets to the nine-yard line. Another nice play by 22, Randy Shannon. He is the other outside linebacker for Miami. In their scheme, they try to force everything to the linebackers in that 4-3. Shannon fights off the block and puts the stop. Well played by Randy Shannon. Second down, and Curry quickly taken out of the game. Now four down linemen for Miami. Rice pressure on the corner, and he did not get too far as Jones, number 63, able to penetrate and get in behind him. So it'll be third down here again for Notre Dame. Continuing to move inside of eight minutes, keeping the ball out of Miami's hands. This game is going just like Lou Holtz hoped it would. Close game, then they being able to run the football. Now third and five, slot to the left and Rice to throw going in. Drops it off for a touchdown. Fullback, Braxton Banks, Notre Dame leads again.
at the touchdown to Braxton Banks, the fullback. He runs a delay out of the backfield. On the play earlier, he bowled for about four yards, and here he showed you what kind of receiver he is. But there was some miscommunication on the Miami defense. Watch these two linebackers as they take the tight end. He goes here. Banks waits, comes right underneath for the touchdown. Well-timed, well-designed play. Lou Holtz always has some delays and screens and passes like that in every game plan that he has. So leading 14-7, Hackett with the ball on the tee. And because of the wind he's kicking into, Miami's return men are set at the 10-yard line. Breeze measured at 10 to 15 miles an hour here this afternoon. Spencer and Hill are at the 10 for the Hurricanes. Feels it at the 14. This is Hill. Middle return. And down he goes. For Notre Dame, through the years, they've had these teams as thorns. Only four teams have beaten them four in a row. Air Force, USC, Michigan State in the past. And now Miami working on a streak. And look at the margin of victory. Included in that, the embarrassment, 58-7 to in Jerry Faust's last game. One the Irish and their fans have never, ever forgotten. And that's why I think the margin of victory, why this game is a heated rivalry. It's not nearly as much with their other teams that are on their schedule. Now Miami, which can strike so quickly, shows motion. Brown on first down, and Walsh is going to put it up. It's Chudzinski crossing underneath against the motion, and he was wide open. First and 10 on an 18-yard pass play, and again, the tight end for Jimmy Johnson's offense. You have to really like Rob Chizinski. He is the guy, he's on the left of your screen, number 84, that was the 15 tight end a year ago. He is not a terribly talented guy, but he's one of those guys that finds a way to get open and then never drops the ball once he catches it. with the call at the line of scrimmage. Gary straight ahead into the heart of the defense. Talk about what Steve Walsh has done by downs. You know, he uses a lot of different receivers, but on first down, you see how accurate he is. Second down, of course, as well. And third down. Third down is really has been his specialty over the last year and a half at Miami. He seems to come up with more big plays on third downs, although he did throw the interception there earlier in the game. Frank Stams, who was not on the field for that play, checks back in. Pritchett and Stonebreaker, the inside men, drop off. Walsh drops to Cleveland Gary. Gary circling for another Miami first down, and the Keens come right back, hammering away to the Notre Dame 41-yard line. 14 more yards. Gary has caught three passes for 47 yards here this afternoon. Remember yesterday when Lou Holtz said, Miami beat you running the football, and what he meant was after the catch, and that was a perfect example. Gary caught about a four-yard pass and made it into a 15-yard gain because he runs so well after the catch. So Georgia Tech stuns South Carolina today in the big upset. And here Notre Dame leading Miami, but early. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up. Walsh's pass is deflected and intercepted. Terrell will go the distance.
60-yard return as Frank Stam, who has played a whale of a game, tips this pass. The left of the screen stands down here, and an interception generally starts with a strong pass rush. Stonebreaker comes in. Stams on the left side of the screen, number 30, gets his hands up. The ball gets tipped as he's trying to throw it to Conley. And Terrell, who's got very good speed, and that's why this is his first start at free safety. They wanted speed back there to be able to make plays like that. to start it. The score is 21 to 7 is get something back on the board before halftime. Another touchdown here. We saw Cleveland Gary be a factor catching the ball earlier in the game and he's got the speed also to get outside. But that's good team defense. There's three or four blue jerseys around Cleveland Gary and that's why he didn't break it for much. Notre Dame continues to shift defensive personnel in and out of the game. show blitz with Volcar. Now Stonebreaker backs away and they don't come. Walsh complete to Gary. And Gary wrapped up the Notre Dame 45. It'll be a first down for the Hurricanes. Another 10 yards. Walsh to his fullback. Brent, you hit the nail on the head. What Notre Dame is doing is coming up and giving Steve Walsh a blitz look right at the beginning. And he calls an audible, then they back off in zone coverage. That time, he still completed it to Cleveland Gary. Now Zorich is out of the game, and they put a fresh nose man in. Three down linemen, and they back off, fully expecting Miami to run the pass play, and instead they go with the draw, and Conley with his best run of the afternoon, battling for extra yardage. So turnovers have plagued this team this year. And that's, that's the big difference between this year's team and last. And today they've had several turnovers as well. One other difference. Michael Irvin, Brian Blades, and Brett Perriman are not there as the outside receivers. This Miami team depends on a fullback, Cleveland Gary, and a tight end, Rob Chizinski. They've got the fullback slotted right now in this formation. Gary goes out. 
Light who came up. Read it perfectly that time. But they continue to move the chains. Another first down. And there's three and a half minutes. Plenty of time here for Miami in the first half. Steve Walsh doesn't have the strongest arm in college football. But if you throw the ball early enough, you still can complete passes. Good timing on the throw to Brown. And then he takes a shot from Todd Light. Very nice release he has. Now Zorich back in at nose, number 50. And Walsh changes the play up at the line. The defense continues to move. They come with the blitz this time. And it's incomplete. He had to hurry because they were coming with the blitz. But he had Gary open for a touchdown. That's the state of mind a quarterback gets in when he sees a blitz. Sometimes you think you have to hurry it, even when you're well protected. It was very good for protection there for Steve Walsh. Had plenty of time to throw the ball, but hurried his throw. Watch the blitz come from all the linebackers inside. He hurries the throw, but he's got plenty of time. And Cleveland, Gary, is wide open for a score. For Miami fans, this is somewhat reminiscent of what Tennessee did. Blitzing different coverages down in that Sugar Bowl game. I'm sure that Benny Testaverde remembers what I said. Now Walsh pulling out. Has time again. Near side out of bounds. And I mean Smagala made sure he was out of bounds. Dan Smagala, who made a nice play there, is, may not be the one of the most talented defensive backs in the league, but maybe one of the most determined. Lou Holtz, when he came here three years ago, thought uh, Smagala wasn't fast enough to play for him, but he hung around, has started the last two years, and every game I see him play, he knocks away a lot of balls. Third and ten, the Irish with a nickel defensive package in their secondary. Walsh drops it off to Gary. Gary steps away from one defender, but he is down at the 24, short of a first down. And Steve Walsh with pretty good protection once again, even though there are three or four men rushing him. That was uh, number 97, Ali, the freshman. Cleveland Gary is so dangerous after he catches the ball, you need two or three guys around him to make sure that he's not going to come up with the extra 20 yards after the catch. Frank Stams, who has not only made four tackles, but set up an interception taken off the field, shaken up, appeared to have suffered a little bit of a head injury. Dizzy there on the sideline. So this is fourth down right now. And they get him out. Scott Kowalski comes up, and Notre Dame will call a timeout. They want to make absolutely sure in this defensive set. The young man, 37, had gone in, and Pritchett will come over along with the entire Notre Dame defense. We'll be right back. Fourth and five situation here. And uh, Pat Hayden, what's your feeling about this call by Miami to go for it? I am very surprised that they're going on fourth and five. And fourth and one, sure, but with five yards, you're going to obviously have to complete a pass. They're thinking must be must be being down by 14 points. They need to get seven before halftime, not three. But I am surprised by the call. They have the wind at their back. I think they should kick, kick a field goal. I don't know. This is a pretty potent offense. They get a first down. They can keep a drive going here. Browns the slot man. Let's see how it works out. Kowalkowski replaced the injured stands. First down. Conley going for the corner. Touchdown Miami. A terrific call by Jimmy Johnson. It's incredible. Conley out of the backfield. He was went to the side where the two white wide receivers were. They came inside and he went right into a vacant area. What a magnificent first half we have had for a big game. Sometimes the athletes are so tight that it doesn't quite come together. But uh, boy, we've had some great plays here so far. Now, Huerta can pull Miami to within seven. There is a penalty flag down. Penalty flag down. He kicked it right through. See if they have to try it again or if it's against Notre Dame. So he's got the extra point. Offside, called against the Irish. And 
it's a seven point game again. Let's take a look at this touchdown. This was just a beautiful play and nobody picked up Conley coming out of the backfield. Somebody has to go with him. Now remember Stams is hurt. He was not over there. And when you have the, as much confidence in your passing game as Miami does, you, I guess you do go for it on fourth and five. But what, what happens here, both these guys come here, Conley goes right out into the vacant area and is wide open. The two wide receivers clear the area and they're very good protection. A linebacker has to pick up Conley there, but that's a mismatch. Nobody was there. Downstairs to John Dockery, Doc. Brent, you mentioned Frank Stamps. I just went over to the bench and talked to the trainer. What happened to him, he's got a finger in the eye, and they expect when his eye clears that he'll be able to come back. It was not a concussion. It was not a head injury, just a finger in the eye. They hope that he'll be back. Notre Dame does. Now back to you, Brent. All right, John. Thank you. Edgar Bennett to kick it off for the Hurricanes. Now, I'll tell you, Miami's not only good, but they are unorthodox. In that Michigan game, I can remember Bob Greasy saying that they probably wouldn't try the onside kick. They had two and a half minutes to go and three timeouts, and here came the onside kick. This time, we got Pat Hayden. It's a fourth and five, and they zip it right on in. I, that's just the kind of team they are, folks. Uh, they're a little bit different, and you got to wonder now. They've got a lot of time left here in the first half. They've got two timeouts to go. Notre Dame, two. They're down by seven. Let's see what Venice elects to do. Anything Jimmy Johnson of Miami comes up with shouldn't surprise anybody who's been watching them now through the years. They really ambush it. Notre Dame fully expecting to kick it all the way. And he'll take it on in. Ismail lets it go out of the end zone with that wind you were talking about at his back. He rips it out. And now the Miami defense, Pat, will attempt to come up with a series and give Walsh another at bat. That's exactly right. Remember, they do have that wind at their back, so their job is to force Notre Dame to punt the football. 2-16 left. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. It's up to Miami's defense to force the punt into that wind, get good field position, and give Walsh another chance. sending Bailey out with the speed to the right side. And coming through is Hawkins. Here comes the defense. They're going to try to give Walsh another at bat here in the first half. It was Bill Hawkins who ripped through his block and made the hit. What Bill Hawkins does, he's got tremendously strong hands that can fight through some blocks. That time, nobody blocked him. A pulling guard should have picked him up, but he was so quick, he went past the guard and ran right into the ball carrier. Hawkins lining up at right defensive end. Curry, one of the tackles, along with Jones. They're down in the middle now. They'll run the draw play, and it's Brooks. Shannon in on that tackle as the Canes do not give him much room. And pretty soon they'll call a timeout. Pretty soon Miami will use a timeout to stop the clock. Here it comes right now. That will leave them with one. They're down to 129. Calling the timeout. It'll be third and 12 in this situation. If they can stop them, make them punt, and then get it back for the final minute. There's so many great names of the past. I'm sure are watching this game. A lot of fellas in the NFL played both at Miami and Notre Dame. Memories of there are two of the greats. Tim Brown. Nice to see you, Tim. And uh, Vinny Testaverde over there on the right. Boy, Pat, we had some great moments with those two. They were fabulous college football players. They were sensational to watch. Vinny Testaverde provided us all with some great moments. And Tim Brown right here in the stadium. Remember all those punt returns and kickoff returns we saw? Now, the one thing that I want to remind everybody of is that the Miami assistant coaches are confident that they can block a punt here this afternoon. I haven't quite seen the, the Miami staff believe that they can get to a punt. And right now would be a terrific situation for them if they get past this third down. Now, this down puts a lot of pressure on Tony Rice. He came through back in his own end zone once. Over. Exactly, and what they may try to do is just throw the ball deep and not risk the interception, either that or maybe some sort of draw play or inside trap. They overload the speed to the right side. They show slot, and Rice rolls in that direction now. He is being chased, and he will not get the first down. Notre Dame will have to punt it away. Miami probably will use its last timeout. They'll stop that clock at 1.16 now, forcing the punt. Timeout Miami, final timeout. And 
while we have a moment, let's take a look at these uh, two fine schools, Notre Dame and Miami. Hunt, when Miami gets the ball, they will not have a timeout left, but they can work the sideline. Now, McDowell and Crum are two players to watch if they can get in. It's a 10-man front, and Miami jumped. But there's longer than five yards to go for the first down. Let's see if they were pulling off. But that's a pretty good indication that they're coming after the punter. That's no uh, return type of play there. Upside defense. Five yards, fourth down. Now will not give the Irish a first down. There is a young man who has specialized in getting in and blocking punts. Bubba McDowell, Benny Blades of the Detroit Lions, finally watching, probably watching from his hotel room. They get ready to play the Giants this week. Bubba replaced him. Friend, some guys just have a knack for it. Bubba McDowell has blocked eight punts in his career at Miami. Well, if they draw him off again, it would be a first down, but Miami expected to be a lot more cautious this time around. Ten men line up. Sexton at his 16. Gets it off. Miami will have good field position. Fair catch called for there by Spencer. He had to make a diving catch. It's only a 26-yard punt. So Walsh and Miami are now 54 yards away with a minute nine and no timeouts with which to work. Well, remember, they didn't need those timeouts at all versus Michigan. And again, with their kind of passing attack, they can come up with big plays very quickly. Stams, number 30, has returned to the game. Brown, Hill, and Gary, the fullback, up as the wide men. They'll slot Gary to the right side. Quickly to Gary, who had not turned around. It was almost intercepted by Light. Gary did not look behind him as the ball was coming, and Light, if he had caught it, would have scored six. And that is all Cleveland Gary. Anytime you're out in the slot formation and there is no man on you, you're not covered, that's the adjustment. You throw the ball right to him, but he did not make the adjustment that Steve Walsh had seen. Now Brown goes out on the side as Dawkins shuttles in the play. Dawkins to the right and Gary coming toward the bottom of your screen as the slot man. They want Hill, and he's got it out of bounds at the 46-yard line. It will be third down and about two for the first down. They've got a minute with which to work to get the ball into the end zone or set up a Carlos Huerta field goal. Now, at this moment, Jimmy Johnson is thinking about that, too, if time starts to run against him. Huerta has the wind at his back. He would use him up to about 50 yards, he told us yesterday. Now the third down. And they'll run Gary. They'll get the first down. That'll stop the clock in college football. Unlike the NFL, they get it quickly stopped. They will hurry up now and set the formation. 54 seconds when the officials think it's ready. They'll start that clock moving again. And Cleveland Gary has been featured in this entire dra drive, whether it's receiving the ball or running the draw for the third and two in the first down. Now the clock inside of 50. Walsh almost intercepted. Number 90, Jeff Alm. Batted it away. Again, this is one of the things that Notre Dame thought they could do because Steve Walsh takes such short, short drops, and that's get their hands up. Alm is 6'7". And he gets those big old paws there. It's a well-timed jump as well. Almost gets it stuck in his face mask. But that's a well-timed jump by Allman. Good coaching by the Notre Dame staff, seeing the short drop of Walsh. Second and 10. The clock at 45 seconds. Hill, Gary, and Dawkins. Chudzinski, the tight end. The officials now make sure everything is ready. And now the referee. Still doesn't want to start it. And he moves up for a word with his umpire. Brent Miami needs about seven yards, really, to get Huerta in position to score his range. Wall straight back. Over the middle to Chudzinski. It's jarred loose. Ball is on the ground. Incomplete. Incomplete pass. He did not have possession. That's the ruling. And Chosinski is hurt as he took a shot to the ribs by Michael Stonebreaker. This 
is one of the more important hits of the first half. Along with Gary, Chudzinski is the man. He may have had it. Yeah, I think it, from that angle, it certainly looked like Chudzinski did have possession. In that case, it should have been a fumble. But he took a shot by Michael Stonebreaker, who read the pattern beautifully and made the play. Now, knowing Miami, they'll come right back and throw to his substitute. 38 seconds with which to work. They want to get Huerta into field goal range. They're out of timeouts. They have to be careful throwing into the middle of the field right now with the clock moving. They show a slot formation. Down to the middle, and it is complete at the 15-yard line to Andre Brown. Same pass he caught earlier versus that double zone. They hit the seam of the defense down the middle like no one does in college. So Andre Brown off the bench with the play. He's the receiver that time for 22 yards. Now 31 seconds with which to work. And they can take a shot at a touchdown. Walsh pulls it out. Has protection. There it is. Cleveland Gary for the touchdown. Miami does it again. Just what they do best of all. What a fabulous college football team working against the clock. They just don't need those timeouts, do they? <laughs> Didn't need them against Michigan. Didn't need them here in this last drive. Now Huerta for the extra point, which would leave us tied with 20 seconds to go. Boy, there's something, aren't they? being put down perfectly for him. And then Carlos Huerta ties it. Watch the slot receiver there. He fools the freshman linebacker, Ali, number 97, who really should be running with Gary, number 43. That's what happens sometimes when you have an 18-year-old freshman playing in a big game like this. But again, take a look behind the offense. At the right of the screen, number 97, Ali is the linebacker who should be covering Gary. But he takes the wide receiver inside. That leaves Gary wide open. And again, a very, very impressive drive by Steve Walsh with no timeouts. Hate to be a broken record, but at the top of the broadcast, we said the two players that Miami will go to in the clutch. They did it against Michigan. They've done it here today. Chudzinski and now Gary. Cleveland Gary, who transferred from Georgia, was hoping to become the next Herschel Walker at Georgia. But instead, as emerging as the first Cleveland Gary at Miami, has caught seven passes for 88 yards and one touchdown. And Miami trailing by 14, just like that comes back. 21 all, 20 seconds left on the clock. The Irish have a pair of timeouts with which to work. Let's see how they elect to play it. The wind at where it is back. He hammered the last one completely out of the end zone. Scoots this one on the ground, and Johnson lets it go out of bounds. That'll be a five-yard penalty. Well, Lou Holtz, going into halftime, has to feel very happy to have a tie ball game. Well, we got a moment here, and let's check in with Jim Nance in New York. Right, Jimmy? We'll kick over. Thank you, Brad. Coming up at halftime, a reminder of all the scores and highlights. The big story so far, an upset in the top ten, Georgia Tech over South Carolina. We'll show you highlights from that game, as well as a talk with the last two Heisman Trophy winners, Tim Brown out of Notre Dame, Vinny Testaverde from Miami. And that's coming up at halftime. College football report. Let's take you back to South Bend. All right, Jim, and there's another candidate looming down Miami way. A fellow by the name of Steve Walsh. 16-0 as a starting quarterback, a national championship. And in the last 155, 14 points on the scoreboard to bring this ball back into a tie. He's out of the St. Paul, Minnesota area. Was not recruited by the then Minnesota coach, Lou Holtz. Much to Holtz's dismay right now. He wishes he was suited up for the Gophers. Looks like he took a shot in the chin, too, there. Looks like he's bleeding in the chin. the kickoff man. I think I might have said where to. That is Bennis with that short kickoff. And Don Grimm returning it for Notre Dame. Bringing it out to the 42 with 15 seconds left here for Notre Dame and they can send some of their speed deep now and see what they can come up with. Jimmy told you we'll be hearing from 
Tim Brown and Benny Testaverde. I guess all of us are really stunned by uh, South Carolina right now. And a new quarterback, Kent Graham, number 17, bends into the huddle. Passing quarterback. Waters comes with him, and Eilers goes out. Has a very, very big arm. And Ismail's got speed on the outside. Waters and Ismail, the two deep men. Graham back. Deflected, caught by Graham. And Graham turns it into a bit of a two-yard gain. And he ran like a fullback. <laughs> Quarterback's got to learn not to do that. Timeout is called. You ever take anybody on quite like this? Are you kidding? Hit? Absolutely not. <laughs> I never caught any passes I threw either. <laughs> not too many receivers of mine did either. But he does a nice job of making a heads-up play after the catch, although I, I think he should have probably gone down. But with two seconds left, they're going to try to use his big arm and try to get the ball downfield, I'm sure. So he's out of Wheaton, Illinois. Same suburb of Chicago, which produced Chuck Long, who will be playing quarterback for Detroit. He went down to the Iowa Hawkeyes. And now Graham will see if he can get something going. They do not have time to get the ball in place for a field goal. This will, this will be it, the last two seconds of the first half. Crowd uh, has grown rather quiet here. They were up 21-7, and uh, Miami, uh, well, they showed you why they're number one and unbeaten. Fabulous, fabulous comeback here in the first half. Now Graham, under pressure, steps away. You'll have to drop it off underneath the green. So the first half will come to an end with the score tied. And it was Cleveland Gary hooking up with Steve Walsh to get this game all even. In the first half, number 43 caught seven passes for 88 yards. This one, the touchdown that brought the Canes right back into the deadlock. Jim Nance will be back with the College Football Report right after this message and a word from your local station. We're tied at 21. Michelob. One taste will tell you why the night belongs to Michelob. And by Kodak Batteries, now improved to last longer than ever. Depend on us. Pat Hayden, 30 minutes of football left. What do we expect here on the part of the Irish? I think what you're going to see is them continue to put pressure on Steve Walsh. We said at the top of the show that was the key. Frank Stams did it in the first half. That's why the game is tied. Notre Dame was able to run the ball, but a great comeback by Miami late in the first half. And we get ready now for the second half kickoff. Edgar Bennis of the Hurricanes will kick it off. Now Notre Dame will have that wind at their back for the fourth quarter. Ismail runs up on this one. He's got it at the five, driven back to the three, and breaks free with that speed of his. Comes out to the 28-yard line. Bubba McDowell finally gets him. Well, Notre Dame has had to put that offensive line together for this game. John Duckery asked Lou Holtz how they were doing. couple of mistakes on fourth down. They let Miami off the hook. Really shoved it down their throat. Tying this one up at 21 all. Lou also told John that the wind in the fourth quarter may wind up being a factor. There is a penalty marker down on first down. Mark Green, the ball carrier for the Irish. And then, again, this is a very important drive for Notre Dame because the first drive of each half, the offense really sets the tone for the entire second half of the game. And it's important for Notre Dame to drive the ball here to keep Steve Walsh from getting the ball with the wind at his back. Well, the Hurricanes offside and the penalty being walked off on first down. And Mark is shaken up. He leaves the game for the Hurricanes, and Pegues, number 58, checks into that defensive line. Pegues will go at left defensive end here. Curry, Jones, and Hawkins. 
This is the fullback Banks and he has met right away. Rod Carter the linebacker stepped into that hole. What about the running attack in the first half Pat? Well they were good but they had most of their success on the left side of the formation following Andy Heck the left tackle. But this has really been a surprise. I think I was surprised how well Notre Dame ran the ball for about 85 yards in the first half. Really that's what Miami's been averaging for about a game the entire game. So they ran the ball very well. Second down now for Notre Dame. They must get to their own 39 for a first down. That time, the Kane defense exerted itself with Carter. Now they fake the draw. Rice to throw it, and he'll take off out of the pocket. Tony Rice scrambling for what could be a first down, depending on where they spot the ball. It's going to be very near a first down for the Irish. The officials will call a timeout. They're going to bring the chains out here to measure it. The quarterback from Michigan gave the Miami defense a great deal of trouble when he scrambled. And that's what happened there. Tony Rice did not force the ball, did not make a mistake. Nobody was open. And again, he has that athletic ability to make it like a sandlot out here and picked up close to a first down, perhaps even the first down. down for Notre Dame on the opening series of the third quarter. Rice has rushed 10 times for 44 yards and a touchdown and passing he's 3 of 6 for 88 yards and a touchdown. Ellis, Harden, and Berry back in the game. The fullback again and the Banks not going 57, the middle linebacker Bernard Clark led the defense that time. He may have squeezed a couple of yards out of it. So it is hard going here in the early moments of the third quarter for that running attack. The Miami defense tightening up in the middle. And right away, that is Bernard Clark's play. He is the middle linebacker on a 4-3 defense. He has anything inside. He reads the guard and finds the fullback. Clark is the man in the middle, standing behind his four defensive linemen. Now Rice on a quick roll. Lobs one, bad pass. Diving catch for the interception by McDowell. And that had to be, it was a push by Ismail, number 25, on the defensive back. The referee didn't call anything, but McDowell made the interception. Pat, this is a bad pass. Rice steps over to the left, and he simply throws a lollipop. Nothing on it. He lobbed it, and McDowell with the diving catch. And, Brent, I think it's very hard for an option quarterback to be a good passer because you get hit so much, and it's such a physical position, it's hard to have any touch on the ball. Al Walsh and the Hurricanes. They scored 15 minutes in the closing two minutes of the first half. They run on first down, and the Irish defense, nothing going there. Ball pops free. Notre Dame ball. Boy, I'll tell you, Jimmy Johnson should complain about this. I thought that there should have been a whistle that forward progress was stopped. And watch this. It was his forward progress was stopped right there. And it was number 50, Zorich first, and then Jeff Alm, number 90, who made the uh, made the fumble recovery, made him fumble the ball, but his his uh, momentum was stopped. All right, nevertheless, the breaks change off. Remember that non-fumble call late in the first half. Now Notre Dame gets a break. See if they can cash in. First and 10 on the Canes. Rice to the option. Keeps it himself. You know, the players have been slipping on this grass here today, and before the game, down on the field, that is a very thin grass surface here. Let's go back to the summer when they had that severe drought in the Midwest. It is possible that the lack of rain during the months of May and June have left it a little thin right now, and there's been some trouble with the footing. Rice coming through, he slipped here. And it was set up with some very good blocking on the right side. The guys are blocking down. That clears Rice on the corner. On a first down, he kept it again, and boy, I'll tell you, big Mr. Hawkins took him on. And Brent, that's an example of why I think it's hard for an option quarterback to have any touch with the ball. You see how hard he gets hit all the time. Even when he doesn't carry it and he pitches it, he's still going to take a beating. Folks, what Pat Hayden is saying is we're not going to see any wishbone run in the <laughs> National Football League. You're right, you're right. Bring the pine boxes out for the quarterback. Certainly not by Dan Marino. <laughs> Second down now, 11 yards. They've got to get to the Canes, 15 for a first down. The 
fullback on the draw. Banks picks his way inside the 25. Notre Dame tried to fool him on that play. Normally, they run green off the draw sequence, and they came with Banks that time, and they really did not fool that defense. Well, ordinarily, you want your quicker back running the draw play, and that is Mark Green. But this time, they go to the fullback, gets a nice block by the center held. Shannon gets blocked inside, but it's Russell Maryland, number 67, who is just so hard to knock off his feet. He is so stout at the line of the scrimmage, he makes the play. Long third down for the Irish. Eilers and Ismail, the wide man, Brown, the tight end on the left side. Rice did not have time, and he is hammered down. And you have to wonder, going into a win, whether this uh, is the kind of area that Reggie Ho might be able to uh, try a field goal. Again, look at the coverage here by this Miami defense. This is what Tony Rice saw. There's nobody open, clearly. You see all three wide receivers and the tight end well covered. Nobody's there. They're going to try Billy Hackett. And not Reggie Ho will kick it. It gets a little bit long. It's a 43-yard field goal, so it will be Hackett. Score tied. Blocked. Live ball. And out of bounds. Miami blocks the field goal attempt with you-know-who number 48, Pat Bubba McDowell. Again, some guys just have a knack for being able to do it. This is left of your screen. This is the ninth kick or punt that Bubba McDowell has blocked in his career. Came right off the corner. The left wing there, it looks like it's number 66, Andy Heck, has to block two men to prevent that, and Bubba McDowell has the speed off the corner to do it. So the score stays 21 all Notre Dame in Miami and we'll be right back. 21 10 minutes left in the third quarter Miami first down at the 40 yard line. No pressure on Walsh this time throws to Gary coming out of the backfield and light rides him out of bounds on the near side. And it's another four-yard gain for Miami. Cleveland Gary has been such a weapon for the Hurricanes. You would think an adjustment Notre Dame would make would be to somehow jam him as he comes out of the backfield. He's come out of the backfield time and time again, and he's also lined up in the slot, but not once has the Irish defense tried to jam him, and he's come free an awful lot. Door in South Bend with John Dockery and Pat Hayden. I'm Brett Musburger. Miami with the ball and a second and five. Tied with Notre Dame, 21 all. Cleveland Garrett tries to cut back for daylight, and he pulls his way toward a first down. If you just joined us, let's take you back through the scoring. Rice got the Irish on the board first. It was seven to nothing. Miami tied it, and Brown with an eight-yard TD reception. Then Banks scored on a pass from Rice. It was 14-7, and quickly it was 21-7 on an interception by Terrell and a 60-yard return. Then in the last two minutes of the first half, first Conley scored on a fourth and five. And after they forced Notre Dame to punt, they came back down, and they hit the fullback, Cleveland Gary, with a 15-yard scoring pass. Notre Dame just had a field goal attempt blocked. Now it is third and inches. Gary, and he is stopped. Leading the defense was Pritchett. Ball was down, the official says. Pritchett felt that he had taken away, but he stops him, leaving it fourth and three, and a punt situation for Miami. So a big defensive play by Pritchett. Again, two watch number 69, George Williams at the top of the screen. Ball over right through the tackle. He is there, Todd Light is there, and then Pritchett to finish him off. Number one, Todd Light is playing a whale of a football game. This is Tim Kalau. He was under extreme pressure, and he did not punt well. This time he has the wind at his back. And they go to the short man on the fake. The fake punt, first down, Notre Dame. could not pick up the first down. Notre Dame ready for the fake. And now the Irish get the ball back. 
8-22. And that put the crowd right back in this game for the first time in some time. Right there, the up back was 99 Britton, and Jimmy Johnson thought he could break a block a punt as well as convert a fake punt today. He's not been able to do that. Brad Britton just did not have enough on the, the three yards that he needed. Notre Dame with the ball at the Miami 46-yard line. Now, Rod Carter, number 91, has started to exert himself as the weak side outside linebacker. Rice to throw on first down. Has time. Waters open. He's got it. Out of bounds at the four-yard line. Rice to Waters. great corner route and it's set up by him faking inside to the post then he breaks out and at the top of the show we said Notre Dame has more speed than they've ever had Ricky Waters is one of those guys beats the corner inside on the fake and then makes the catch first and goal with the full house Rod West number 43 checks into the backfield touchdown tackle. Watch him as he buries Greg Mark and clears the hole there for Pat Eiler. Stays with his block. Has very good foot position. Sees right there with him the whole way. And Eiler sees the block, hugs it, cuts right inside of him. Pat, that is only the second rushing touchdown Miami has allowed this year. Both of them here this afternoon. Tony Rice took one in himself to put Notre Dame ahead 7-0. So they're up 28-21. Billy Hackett, number 18. And Randall Hill, one of the deep men. And again, because of the wind, they are standing at about the 10-yard line. The shadows start to lengthen here in South Bend. Now, Jimmy Johnson could afford that fake punt because of the strength of his football team. But by letting Notre Dame score, he has allowed the crowd to really get back in this one now. Miami must silence them first of all, and they can do that in moments. a few times a gamble that backfires in his face. Before that, Notre Dame had not taken any scoring advantage of four Miami turnovers. They'd had to do it the hard way. Short to Hill. He runs up near the 25-yard line. tomorrow in the NFL. You take a look at all the games we've got. A total of nine. It's doubleheader Sunday. Now at 12.30 Eastern time, we'll hear from Dick Butkus and also Mike Ditka. We'll have an interview with Iron Mike on what's up with the Chicago Bears. Late games. 49ers and the Rams. I know that Greg Bell of the Rams watching this game, former Notre Dame running back. We'll take a look at Greg Bell. And we'll hear from Will McDonough and Irv Cross. Irv Cross will be out at the Giant Lion game. Shannon Crowell, number 20, into the backfield. Cleveland Gary, the running back. 
The Irish defense ready, and again that nose man, Chris Zorich, came across with initial penetration. He's out of vocational high school, the same high school that produced Dick Butkus, and he's playing just like a Butkus right now. And Brent, what makes him unusual, talking about Chris Zorich, is his, his ability to be stout and stop the inside plays, but he has enough athletic ability to get to the outside of the defense and make some stops there as well. It's unusual for a nose tackle to be able to do both. Barry Panfield, shaken up, has to leave to the sideline. Number 68 goes over to Jimmy Johnson's sideline, so they make a substitution in the offensive line. Irish show that five-man front. Stams is on the right. Walsh, with time, complete. And into Notre Dame territory, Rob Chudzinski, his tight end who always seems to get open when they need a big play. There's 18 more yards. Of the total offense, we'll have Roger Riley check. I'd love to know Cleveland Gary and Rob Chudzinski, the percentage of this offense that they have here this afternoon. Now with a first down at the Notre Dame 48-yard line. run the delay with Crowell. Stam's hit him first. And then Zorich is right there to clean up along with Alm, number 90. Frank Stam's again coming out, opening up the second half, playing well. See, he stays right at home. That's what you need to do as an outside linebacker when you're concerned about the draw play. He got some help inside from Jeff Alm, but he stayed right at home. Mirko Jurovic, number 74, is in that defensive line. Miami needs eight yards on this second down. Bluff a blitz. Short drop over the middle. Incomplete. He wanted Brown that time. Smagala and Terrell were there. 53% of Miami's total offense. Cleveland Gary and Rob Chudzinski. Absolutely amazing. And Hanfill, a little bit of pain over there. Is it a uh, inside of his left leg? It appears to be down there, Pat. And he's been a member of this offensive line for Miami over the last three years and done a remarkable job. This offensive line, I think, is one of the best in the country. They have protected Steve Walsh and Vinny Testaverde before him better than just about anyone. Don't get enough credit, these guys. Darren Handy is the guard in there. Passing situation for the Hurricanes. They flood the right side, three out, Walsh with time, and he's got the first down, it's that man again, Cleveland Gary, first down at the Notre Dame 24-yard line, 20 more yards for the fullback coming out of the backfield. Cleveland Gary is hiding on the wing formation, the right bottom of the screen. But again, see, nobody bumps him as he comes off the line of scrimmage. He's got a free run right through the defense. You have to stop a guy, at least give him a jam close to the line of scrimmage if he's hurting you. He now has nine catches, 113 yards. His hand is so large, he needed a 16 and a half size ring. He's blocking for Crowell. Ooh, Crowell got hit hard by Terrell. Ball coming free on that far side, but he was down. Ooh, that was a big time blow over there. Pat Terrell was the guy they were hoping were gonna come up with a lot of big plays. He's right in the middle of your screen, number 15. And again, this is his first start of the season. He's got speed, and he's got the ability to put a hit on a running back. He called the ball down, it did come loose, but Miami still recovered it. One of those talented Florida athletes who got away from the state. Second down and nine. Irish with five. They come on the blitz, and it's intercepted. Jeff Ohm intercepts the ball. The Irish blitz forces Walsh to the short drop. There's the fifth Miami turnover, and Jeff Ohm is 6-7. Barry Alvarez, the defensive coordinator, told that because Steve Walsh takes such short drops, they felt their linemen could get their hands up and deflect balls and make plays like this. And when you have tall guys like Alm, who's 6'7", that's what happens. So the Canes were driving for a tying touchdown. Now Rice trying to reposition Eilers quickly over to the left side slot. And he runs Brooks, and Marks chases him back, and Brooks finds daylight. 
Brooks explodes to the 47. Individual athletic ability. 22 yards as he was cut off by Greg Mark. And again, Brent, another example of a different type of athlete at Notre Dame that wasn't there a few years ago in the route. Tony Brooks sees everything shut down. Greg Mark makes a great play, forces it back inside, but gets no help because everybody had overrun the play, and Brooks is up the field for a big game. Now, Robert Bailey checks into that defensive secondary for Miami on a first down. And here he comes again. Brooks on the cutback, and Curry wraps him up. Bernard Clark forced him in, and Curry made the tackle for the Hurricanes. What Notre Dame has is a nice mixture of running backs. Tony Brooks can give you a big play. He's a good outside runner with speed. Mark Green, very strong from tackle to tackle. Good inside runner. Jimmy Jones now out of the game. Maryland and Curry are the defensive tackles. Mark and Hawkins the ends. Rice to throw on second and eight. Right down the middle to his tight end complete. The big fella, Derek Brown. Two deep zone. We've seen both teams run this all day long. Again, the tight end. You see these two guys playing back here. He gets right in the seam of the defense, and that is the soft spot. You have to hold the tight end in nice touch here by Rice. Lofted it over the linebacker and in front of the safety. Harden, who was a defensive back on that play, number 39, goes off to the side. He was shaken up. Hurley Brown in. And for Miami, Derek Brown is the one who got away. Jimmy Johnson thought he was coming, but he paid a visit to Notre Dame, and he got all wrapped up in the tradition, and here he is. And three seasons from now, folks, you'll be looking at an All-American. Derek Brown is one of the most talented freshmen tied in to come along in a long, long time. First and ten now for the Irish. Rice on the option. Here's Brooks sliding inside. He explodes inside the 20-yard line. Notre Dame knocking on the door again. And this draw has been a nice mixture of power football, some option football, and we saw the big pass play to Derek Brown, the tight end down the middle. And about their pass and attack, Rice has only completed five of them, but they're for 31 yards each. Nice block by the fullback, Anthony Johnson, number 22, cleared the way for Tony Brooks. Now Mark Green comes in as the tailback. With three yards to go for a first down. Miami defense gets back. Here's the pitch now to Green. Johnson leading him. Mark was there. He pulls away from Mark, but he did not get the first down. Brent with 2.41 left in the third quarter and Notre Dame driving. This becomes the most important third down defensive play for Miami. They need to stuff them here, otherwise Notre Dame drives again and the crowd really gets involved. Greg Mark was injured earlier in the game. Now he is being helped off again. This a tremendous blow to the defensive line of the Hurricanes. Greg Mark opened the season as a tackle. They moved him outside to give him more running room. He is the one who penetrated and came through first. Now, Green cuts inside, and Mark slides to the ground, unable to hold on. And he leaves because of that leg injury. And Willie Pegues, who was unhappy for the last couple of weeks because he lost his starting job, now can regain it with a strong effort. This is going to be third and very short for Lou Holtz and the Irish. The ball is near the Miami 16-yard line. They show that full house. Now they switch quickly out of it. They put Eilers on the other side. Johnson for the first down. There's a penalty flag down. Penalty marker down. and 10 for Notre Dame. Anthony 
Johnson, who we saw on that short yardage play, is one of the great short yardage runners on this team because he runs so low to the ground, he presents a small hitting object, and he's hard to get a big hit on. Notre Dame 28, Miami 21. 2.13 to go in the third. Notre Dame will have a first down at the Hurricane 11-yard line. They have thrown going into the fullback, and they also have run from the wishbone, and they've kept it on the option. Now they show the eye formation. And Brooks cannot step outside. Hawkins helped penetrate, and that allowed the safety man, McDowell, to come up and finish it. And Greg Mark, who you see getting attended to there, really has been a big player for this Miami defense. As Brent said, they moved him outside because he has the kind of agility to handle the option plays, and he was going to be a very important player in today's game. Second and nine, Banks and Green are the setbacks. Rice runs the option, keeps it, and Clark wraps him up. Bernard Clark, the middle linebacker, bringing him down at the 11-yard line. Bernard Clark not only made the play, but he's going to fight off the block of Derrick Brown, all 6'7", 230 pounds of him, fights through. He's got nice pursuit. His feet never get tangled up and puts the play on him. But Lou Holtz here had success running that little delay route earlier for a touchdown to Banks. This is the kind of situation where you like to see that again. Bobby Harden back on the field for the Hurricanes. They've also got the tight end. Rice off a of fake. Goes, and it's deflected, incomplete. They wanted Waters, who was alone, and Tony threw to the left of him. He had him open momentarily, and that allowed the defensive back, Donald Ellis, to come over quickly. And Ricky Waters, number 12, was wide open right in the back of the corner, but he, oh, he underthrew it. The ball was way high, but Waters was wide open on the inside. So it's Reggie Ho time for the Irish. This a 27-yarder. Notre Dame had one blocked, but that was Billy Hackett attempting that one. 37 seconds in the third period. Miami with tremendous kick blocking ability. And this one on the money. It's a 10 point Notre Dame lead. injury here and uh, the news on Harden and Panfield is fine but Greg Mark you can see him along the sideline a defensive lineman his ankle is wrapped in ice it's questionable whether he'll be back right now now back to you Brent all right John and they certainly would miss that defensive end he's been a standout player for this defense so there's the score by quarters still 37 seconds left here in number third I'll tell you what might have been the most important moment of the afternoon when Notre Dame won the toss and deferred, they're going to have the win at their back for the fourth quarter. Why the return men for the Hurricanes right now are standing up on the 15-yard line, and so they kick it on the ground, and this is Randall Hill racing to the right side and brought down by a beautiful tackle by number 13. A gorgeous job by Pat Eilers. You have pointed out the wind. Miami has scored all 21 points when they've had the wind at their back. They did not score early. But again, the short kick, because of the wind, the squib kick, it comes right up to Randall Hill. And Eilers, who scored earlier, again, the transfer from Yale, fights through two blockers. That's all determination by Pat Eilers. The worst thing about scoring a touchdown against Miami, you give the ball back to them. And here they come. Ball on the 25-yard line. Can the Hurricanes stage yet another miracle? We're about to find out. Walsh is back. Has plenty of time. Complete over the middle for a first down. He hits Dawkins. And that an 18-yard gain working to his wide receiver. So they have fallen behind by 10 points here in the second half as a result of these turnovers. But, you know, the early ones, folks, 0 for 4 Notre Dame win. It's the last two that were critical. The fake punt turned the momentum of the game completely around and it hasn't been the same but now here's Miami right back at the 
43 yard line. Irish show blitz back back out and Gary is spun around and hammered down by number 34 West Pritchett. It's football. Today's CFA game is sponsored by Michelob. One taste will tell you why the night belongs to Michelob. Ryder, we're there at every turn. And by today's Howard Johnson, we're changing a lot of minds. That scoreboard has witnessed a lot of memories here in South Bend. Folks, see that little opening there up there next to fourth quarter? Frank Leahy used to hide an assistant coach up there. Right there with binoculars, he'd run down at the intermission and tell him about the line spacing. <laughs> the Irish did that? I imagine the ghost of Frank is very much with us here this afternoon. Now Walsh pulls out. With time, throws complete to his tight end, Chudzinski, on the far side before he is forced out of bounds. And on the sidelines, that symbol that has become known as the Hurricanes of Miami, four fingers up, telling one and all that the fourth quarter belongs to us. And remember at Ann Arbor, five and a half minutes to go, they trailed the Wolverines 30 to 14 without using a single timeout. They came back to beat Michigan 31 to 30. Now they trail Notre Dame by 10 and they're driving for the first down. Walsh changing the play at the line of scrimmage against this Irish ever-changing defense. Stonebreaker picked up on the blitz. The throw and it is complete on the far side. A fabulous catch over there by Brown who was under enormous pressure and held on. And that was beautifully timed by Walsh. Again, you don't need to have Terry Bradshaw's arm if you can throw the ball on time. And that's just what happened. Brown ran the out pattern against the soft coverage, and the ball was right there on time. Now a first and 10 for the Canes at the Notre Dame 24-yard line. Gary and Crowell are the setbacks. Off a fake to Crowell. Buys time, complete over the middle to Gary, and Gary's inside the 10-yard line. 15 more yards for that combination. Walsh to his fullback, and not much pressure on Walsh during this drive. Miami's done a much better drive, a much better job this drive of protecting Steve Walsh. Frank Stams has not been in his face. Pritchett and Stonebreaker, the inside men. Walsh again changes it against that defensive look. Gonna throw for it. Incomplete. He wanted Brown, who was cutting in. So it'll be second down. Right of the screen, Andre Brown runs the slant pattern. That's a tough pattern to throw when you have so many inside linebackers. See, there are three guys on the inside. The quarterback feels all those players, and sometimes he takes something off the ball, and that's what happened there to Walsh as he tried to get the ball to Brown on the slant. Second down with the ball just inside the 10-yard line. Brown, Dawkins, they'll throw to Chudzinski to the short side if he curls toward the flag. And they run Crowell behind him this time, trying to catch them off balance. And Zorich is into a pushing match over there on the far side with number 79. That's Mike Sullivan, two Chicagoans going at it pretty good over there. Flannery substitutes for the Irish and Zorich will come out right now. Third down, the ball is at the Notre Dame six yard line. And the defensive coaches on their sidelines are telling the Irish defenders get those hands up again and tip into the ball. Walsh changing the play using the hand signals as a slot to the right. Under pressure this time, throws incomplete, and Brown was down in the end zone. He and Light had collided. And the field goal unit trots onto the field for Jimmy Johnson. Carlos Huerta. Number 27 with a 23-yarder.
Kirk Sandifer, number 12, backup quarterback, will put it down. Beautiful kick. Never a doubt about that one. And the lead is now seven. 31 to 24, 13 minutes to go. And here, Jim, our score is 31-24, Notre Dame over Miami, 13 minutes to go. Well, we've had more than 700 total yards here this afternoon. This game reminds me of another Miami game, not a Miami-Notre Dame game, but a Miami-Boston <laughs> College game. You get the feeling that maybe this one will come down to that last at bat, too, don't you? Menace with the ball on the tee. Short kick into the wind. This male has to go through his legs. He'll hurry and pick it up and get buried. He should have dove on it right there. He risked fumbling it. Instead, Notre Dame will have the ball in bad field position. And Back that's near the 10 yard line. And that's a big difference because they should have had this ball up near the 40 yard line. But again, the wind is playing tricks with the ball. It goes right through his legs. And there he should have just fell on it. He risked the fumble, but he was lucky enough to hang on to it. This is the worst starting field position. We're starting now. Tony Rice did throw a ball out of his own end zone in the first half after they got backed up. That was after a penalty. So it is first and 10, and Rice is going to throw. Off a of fake, he buys some time. Going long now, incomplete. And Ismail really pushed Bubba McDowell away. He is lucky he did not get a penalty at the end of that play. Let's go downstairs to John Dockery. You know, Brent, you and Pat have been talking about Tony Rice's touch. Well, Lou Holtz was concerned about that, too. So what he did, he went out and bought Tony a dartboard and some darts because he thinks the throwing motion of darts is much like the throwing motion of football. And when you consider that Tony Rice only completed five passes in his first two games, Lou was willing to try anything. After he got the dartboard, he completed 19 for over 200 yards his next two games. So the dartboard must be working. Now back to you, Brent. Dartboard never acted like Bubba McDowell. John never came after you. Rice on the move gets away from a defender. Incomplete. He threw that one out of bounds. Alanese was the receiver here on the near side. Again, trying to get the ball to Alan Neal. This is the earlier one to Ismail, but there was double coverage on him. It was a short zone taken away by Barry, and McDowell, number 48, was a safety cover and should not have thrown that ball. I don't know what Ismail was thinking about pushing him like that. That's, I mean, a, that's the second time in the game he has done that. He did it to another uh, defensive back earlier in the first half. Look at that offense for this afternoon. Mm. Two unbeatens, number one against number four. Notre Dame leading it by seven. This is a big third down for Rice. Holtz has been throwing, going out. And he wants him to put it up again. High, complete to his tight end. Derek Brown with the biggest play of the game so far. 19 yards, and the Irish alive on a big third down pass. And how about Tony Rice? When a year ago, Derek Brown was a high school player recruited by Miami, and in this game, the Notre Dame game, he was in Miami sideline in locker room being recruited. But he came to Notre Dame. He ran a beautiful out route that time. He stretched the defense, broke out, well-timed. The play the Irish saved for the second half. They did not show Derrick Brown in the first half. Good offensive strategists always keep something in their hip pocket for that second half. It separates winning from losing. And Derrick Brown has made two huge plays. Now there was confusion down in the middle, so Rice took the ball and jumped ahead as the... I don't see a penalty flag down there just yet. We're talking more about Derek Brown, Brent. Most high school All-Americans who are highly uh, recruited and heralded, it's oftentimes they don't make the adjustment well when they get to the college campus. But Derek Brown is everything that Lou Holtz thought he was when he recruited him. Out there must have been confusion there on the snap, and uh, Rice just made the most of it. Second down and eight yards to go now against the Miami defense. And Mark is back on the field, number 94. Here comes the blitz. It is Shannon. They pick him up, and Hawkins gives chase with Mark. On the roll, it is complete to Ismail. And he is hammered by Curry, a defensive lineman who got back short of the first down. 
Watch Greg Mark working off a bum ankle, number 94. He's at the right of the screen, fighting through Tony Brooks's, uh, Brooks's block. And he is really hurting, yet this is such an important game. And he gets whacked right there, Ismail. But again, the athletic ability of Tony Rice made that play happen. Puts him in a third and very short. So they'll show that full house look as West. 43 comes on in as a blocker for them. Bigger, big one. Rice keeps it. Now he pitches. It's on the ground. Loose ball picked up by Notre Dame. And Brooks is brought down. Oh, a dangerous moment there. But the Irish will be forced to punt. That's why they call it the luck of the Irish, because that ball could have gone anywhere. Again, Tony Rice makes the pitch. It's a little bit out in front of Ricky Waters. Oftentimes, that happens to a quarterback when he has to throw it to his left with his left hand. They usually aren't as proficient. But Tony Brooks is there to make the lucky recovery. Now that 10-man rush against Jim Sexton. They will come again. Gets it off. Drives Spencer back inside the 35-yard line. And Spencer is down at the 46-yard line. Miami, 54 yards away from a tying touchdown. 10:28 remaining, and we'll be right back. Steve Walsh, again, you can see how accurate he has been. He has thrown it well on each down, both short and long, and he has thrown it to six different receivers today. Zorich back in at the nose, Conley back at tailback behind Gary, and Walsh on first down is going to put it up again. Drops it off inside to Conley, and he gets a first down. 11-yard gain, Walsh to Conley. Man, they're into Notre Dame territory with a 43-yard line. You know, Brandon, as I watch Steve Walsh today, it's amazing again, another Catholic quarterback got away. Steve Walsh, Vinny Testaverde, Bernie Kozar, and Jim Kelly were all Catholics and all chose to go to Miami. Stonebreaker shows that blitz, backs off. Now Bolkar moves up. Walsh with the adjustment. And Conley and Stonebreaker brings him down on the near side. So the Notre Dame linebackers get the job done that time. Stopping Miami on first down, and it'll be second and 11. If you're thinking what Miami might do if they score the touchdown, Jimmy Johnson is committed to going to two if time is running out. But still, with 9.30, if they score quickly, he'll probably kick the extra point. Gary is on the wing. Chudzinski set there along with him. They split the two out. They go to Chudzinski, and Zorich, the nose man, leads the defense. It will leave Miami in a third and long, however, and that's the best defense that Notre Dame has shown yet against Gary over on a wing, and they bring the tight end right with him on that side and try to split open the defense. You know, I know you really like Chizinski, and so do I. You know, in an era where college football seemed to manufacture their reputation, he kind of goes quietly about his job and just gets open and catches the ball. Very impressive guy. Here's a big third down. Notre Dame jumped across. Let's see if they were pulled. The umpire stepping in. Outside. Bloop. So now it makes it a third and about two. And that's a big play right there, Brent. Big mistake by the Notre Dame defense. Steve Walsh this afternoon has thrown for 370 yards. Look at the combined yards in that game. A thousand yards in that game. No one has ever thrown for more yards against Notre Dame than Walsh has here this afternoon. 370. Now Miami in that position where they could run for the first down or maybe ambush it. They're going to throw it. Walsh. Beautiful. 
the catch by Brown and out of bounds at the 14. A spectacular catch and a gain of 21 yards. That is an incredible throw and touch. I wasn't sure whether he was throwing it to Brown or Randall Hill. He had both of them. But again, it's such an easy pass to catch. It is so soft. And it looks like from that angle, he was throwing it to Brown. And if he could have just kept his balance a little bit better, he would have scored. Set up by good pass protection. So a wide receiver with a reputation for dropping the ball comes of age here this afternoon. From Chicago, Brown has caught six for 105 yards and a touchdown. And they run Cleveland Gary. He battles his way down close to the 11-yard line. Eight minutes left in this game. Yesterday, when the Miami Hurricanes arrived, Andre Brown said, excuse me for just a moment. We were chatting on the side. Excuse me, Mr. Musburger, I got to go down to the end zone and practice waving to the crowd when I score. He must have known something. I just thought he was putting me on a little bit down there. There was another great moment that Miami fans should know about. The baseball team came up here and played the Fighting Irish. And in the first game of that series, Notre Dame won it 11 to 2. Rich Dalrymple, the SID, saw me uh, having a beer, and he said, hey, Brent, they ran up the score on us. <laughs> all right, Walsh pulls out now. Goes for the end zone, has him all alone, and he's no good. He had backed out of the end zone. Andre Brown out of the back of the end zone, and he was open. And what nice play by Todd Light, number one there, the corner, who at the very last moment, as you see Light, number one, he's playing his zone, the very last moment, he gets in the way of the reception, gets his hand up, and knocks the ball out of Brown's hand. That's a good play. Third down and seven for the Canes. Brown and Hill go to the left. Conley is out there on a wing. Gary all alone in the backfield. Incomplete. Johnson complaining about no call. And I think he was upset because Leonard Conley was wide open. Now, he did say pass interference, but when the ball gets tipped, as that ball was, there is no pass interference. Jimmy is claiming that there was, but the ball is going to get tipped. Early on by inside, one of the inside linebackers tipped that ball. But watch Conley, 28, he's wide open in the flat. Fourth down. Puts it down. Notre Dame pounces on the loose ball. Walsh is quickly there. Was he called down? Notre Dame ball. They have fumbled at the one-yard line. Jimmy Johnson furious. Mike Stonebreaker has just recovered the biggest fumble of the season for the Fighting Irish. Jimmy doesn't believe it. He thought the receiver, Cleveland Gary, was down. Again, this is fourth and seven. There is no such thing as long yardage for this team. There's everything riding on this pass. The ball is caught there. He has possession. And the ball came loose before he went down. That's a good call by the official. And this recovery there by Stonebreaker. You're going to see the ball come out of his hands. You talk about luck or whatever. The ball bouncing back out of the end zone, recovered on the one. If they could have recovered it in the end zone, they'd have had it out on the 20. Instead, they are buried back here. And quickly, they throw it to Ismail. And Ismail comes out to the 10. There's a penalty marker down. It was thrown as the last tackler jumped in. Lou Holtz is doing one thing differently than Bo Schimbeckler did. That hold goes against Notre Dame. There is a big, important difference right now. He is really not growing conservative. He's been throwing coming out. Now, the flag was thrown. down from there. It was a nice selection of passes if you're going to throw it out of the end zone. That's the kind of pass you want. A nice, safe, quick screen out to a guy with speed like Ismail. You know what that reminded me of? That great 
Sugar Bowl game between Notre Dame and Alabama when Errol Parsegan threw the ball to the tight end coming out. This one not nearly as successful, but the penalty came. And Jimmy's still trying to talk to the official. Just furious on that far side right now about this turn of events here. Plenty of time left in the game. 6.40 to go. And they run that sprint draw package with Brooks out to the five-yard line. Shannon mixing it up down in the middle. And again, with 6.28, this next two downs for this Miami defense will determine, I think, how if they're going to maintain that number one ranking. These become the critical downs for this Miami defense. Anthony Johnson replaces Banks. This is a second down. Irish must get to the 11. So they have five yards to go here. Crum is now playing linebacker. They run Brooks wide. He cuts up. Stayed on his feet long enough. And a Notre Dame first down. 11 yards on that play. And one back cleared the way for the other. Anthony Johnson, the fullback, threw a key block that allowed Tony Brooks to find the seam in the first down. Johnson's the fullback, number 22. Watch as he kicks the defensive linebacker, Shannon, out. Brooks hugs that block, cuts inside, and that's a big first down for the Irish. Five and a half minutes to go. Shannon now back in as a linebacker, and he comes in to make the stop that time. So Crum replaced Shannon for a play. Lou continuing to call the plays for the Fighting Irish, as he has done all game long, using shuttling fullbacks to bring them in and out. Second down and long. on the roll under pressure incomplete through a one hopper that time and number 67 on the Miami defense that time Russell Maryland was a blind pressure forced him to hurry or he might have hit the open man Ricky Waters was the intended receiver and it was Maryland who exerted force think about Russell Maryland he's only 6'1 and 275 pounds but he's got a dancer's feet he's very very quick and built and gets very good leverage and can get upfield. Now another big play for Tony Rice. Over 800 total yards. Here's the third down. Nine yards for the first down. Miami presses with its defense. And Rice could not get free. And it was Maryland tripping him up that time. That was the right call for that defense. Man for man defense, they had the quarterback draw on, but again, a terrific play by Russell Maryland inside. 67, right there. Left part of the screen. As a quarterback draw, if he doesn't tackle him, that's gonna be a first down for the Irish. Big play. Now they line up 10 men against this punt again. And Sexton, the punter, a little bit late coming onto the field. 10 seconds left on the clock game was so good he was enjoying it <laughs> standing at the four gets it off drive Spencer back to the 42 yard line and he is down at the 49 yard line 43 yard punt and a seven yard return 352 to go and here come the hurricanes again Leadership Awards given for team contributions, academics, and citizenship. Bill Huckins from Miami. He's a business major from Hollywood, Florida. Done a splendid job with a 3.2. Reggie Ho from Notre Dame. He's that pre-med major who does the field goal kicking here. He's from Hawaii. And to Toyota donates a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Well, Jimmy Johnson did a little officiating up at Ann Arbor. 
not so successful here in South Bend. He's claiming that the ground caused the fumble. The replay indicated that it did not. Nevertheless, it is first and ten for the Hurricanes at midfield. And Walsh to put it up again. With time, he comes to Chudzinski, his tight end, who is forced out of bounds. A penalty marker goes down after Chudzinski is driven out of bounds on the near sideline. That's a good call. He was way out of bounds, I think, when Chris Zorich, the nose tackle, who, although hustling, hit him late. So a big personal foul about to be tacked on against Notre Dame. Late hit, defense, 15-yard penalty. Here you see the end of it. He's out there. Take two steps out before Zorich hit him. You know, in fairness to Zorich, and I don't usually ease up on somebody who hits anybody late. His head was down over there on the sideline. I don't think it was intentional, but nevertheless, it was a good call. He was out of bounds when the call was made. He has played with a lot of exuberance here this afternoon. Now we're down to it. 3.45. First and 10 for Miami. And again, Walsh. Stams gets him from behind. The ball's on the ground. Notre Dame. Frank Stams does it again. But you can see he's got the bandage on the chin. He took a shot in the first half. And he's had more pressure than he's ever had. This has been a war here this afternoon in South Bend. Second down and 15. And timeout is being called. They were substituting linemen. And they got on the field late with Tim Grunhardt, who had just come on the field, injury and all. And now Rice will go over and talk to Holtz. Three minutes, and we'll be right back. Controversial moment that Jimmy Johnson was complaining about. Cleveland Gary coming out of the backfield. Now watch Streeter. Number 27, he delivers the blow for Notre Dame at the one. Ball coming free. Bounces loose and is recovered at the one-yard line. Now the next possession. Miami again coming back. And Frank Stams out of Akron. Turns the corner, comes from behind, forces the fumble. Chris Zorich recovers it for Notre Dame. Now they have a second and 15. Pat, what about that play down by the goal line? And Gary did not have possession. That's what was happening. He was bobbling the ball. That's why it was a fumble and not the touchdown. And the official made the right call. Now Notre Dame with the full house. They substituted the injured guard. And Rice running the ball wrapped up by Hawkins who gets across. And Miami with all three timeouts remaining and plenty of time in this game. Wouldn't it be something if it came down to the two-point conversion? Just might happen. And remarkable, Miami came into the game with 14 turnovers. Today, they have had seven. Largely the result of Frank Stams putting pressure on Steve Walsh. Third and 17. Pat, what would you call here? Would you be conservative or would you go long now? I think you take a shot, you have one-on-one -on -one coverage down with Ismail. If they can't catch it, you don't worry about it, you punt the ball away. But throw the ball downfield. They've got Robert Bailey one-on-one -on, -one on Ismail. Rice is hit, though, and he cannot get it away. As Shannon comes in, forces the fumble. Miami's ball inside the 15-yard line. Again, it is Greg Mark who made another great play. The guy with the bum ankle puts the pressure on Tony Rice. Far right of the screen, Greg Mark. 
Again, right in here, these two guys come in and put the pressure on Tony Rice. Again, Lou Holtz is figuring he's going to get this ball off, and it's going to be a safe deep pass. That Shannon, number 22, who really put the stop on him, and Mark, who made the recovery. Right now, Miami loves to throw on first down. Going in after a turnover. Let's see what they come up with. They're going to run Crowell. He broke a tackle, battled his way to the 11-yard line that time. And that was Conley. That was Conley. Check that, number 28. And this is the area of the field. If you have a tight end who is effective like Chazinski is, you can do all kinds of business in the middle of the defense. Now it is second down. Gary is out on the wing right behind Chazinski over here on the right. He throws complete to Gary, and Gary is wrapped up immediately by Streeter. So it's a third down for the Hurricanes. The ball at the Notre Dame, 11-yard line. Notre Dame is doing down here is playing zone defense, and as soon as Steve Walsh throws it, they react, and if they catch it, they're not going any, anywhere after the catch. Walsh changing the play. Over the middle, incomplete. And West Pritchett, number 34, dropping back to defend that pass. And it is fourth down again, a great defensive stand here. And Jimmy Johnson uses one of his three timeouts. Watch right here, Wes Pritchett is the man, number 34, who does a nice job. Steve Walsh throws his ball into traffic. Pritchett makes his drop outside, then reads the eye, steps inside. The ball is thrown behind Gary, but Pritchett makes a nice play on it. Now the Notre Dame defense coming over to the sideline. Jimmy Johnson brings the offense. So it has come down to this play. It is fourth down. Miami will have the ball at the 11. Gary Stevens, the offensive coordinator, and upstairs, he's been talking to the staff on the field. Brent, the last fourth and seven. That's Barry Alvarez, the defensive coordinator from Notre Dame. The last fourth and seven, remember, they converted throwing the ball to Cleveland Gary, but he did fumble. Twice they faced fourth down today. Both times they've actually thrown the ball for completions that would have picked up the first down. 51 seconds remaining. It's 31 to 24. Notre Dame and this fourth down coming up. something. Touchdown, Andre Brown. Now they'll go for two, I believe. Jimmy will use a timeout. It's 31-30 at 45 seconds. There is such confidence on this entire Miami team, no matter what the circumstances. Fourth and seven is like first and ten for them. It does not phase them. The third time they've had the situation, the third time they've converted. A beautiful lob throw and a great adjustment by Andre Brown, who comes back and makes the catch. Andre Brown, who caught some passes over the middle, watch as he, as he sells Todd Light on the inside move of the post pattern, breaks back out to the corner. This was set up earlier when Andre Brown caught the inside routes. Todd Light bites on it, he breaks out, and then makes a great adjustment. Miami must decide what kind of a two-point play to use. They use a play 
commonly referred to by everyone except an official <laughs> as a pick play. A flood, as they call it. And again, on this kind of decision, most teams generally move the ball to the left hash for a right-handed quarterback, which Miami has done. You have that option, and usually there is a flood or a pick on the right side of the formation with your back catching the ball. And most defensive teams know that, and the way you defend it is play zone defense, not man for man. 45 seconds to play, Notre Dame 31, Miami 30, and going for two. Brown and Dawkins to the right. just the one. You get the two hops and you get the uneven bounce. Now Lou is changing a couple of players out here. He wants to put Tony Rice. He has sent his quarterback into the game. His quarterback is on the far side 45. How about this one? He's got Tony Rice back here on this onside kick. And he's put him over to the side where Huerta has kicked it. Here's the kick. Did it go far enough? Notre Dame pounced on it anyway. Notre Dame's got it. <laughs> Anthony Johnson, the fullback, wrapped up the onside kick. 42 seconds. And this is one of the scariest things. When you're standing over there, and you know the ball's coming to you. But he didn't wait for it. He went after it and got it, and that was the difference. The ball didn't take the big hop that Huerta was expecting. The echoes are awake this afternoon. Rice keeps the clock moving. Miami down to one timeout. They use it up now.
just kneel down now as the clock continues to tick away the seconds. Miami cannot stop at this time. This place about to explode. Notre Dame's biggest upset since they ended the Oklahoma streak.